Jesus, Allah, <laughs> all the prophets. We believe them all. So yes. Islam is in the middle between the Christianity and Judaism. Yes. Also, we we have the same good teachings, uh, like uh, don't kill, don't uh, rob anyone, yes. do bad things. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we have something in common. Yeah. <laughs> the only difference between us and the Christians that the message is the same, but they corrupted their books. Okay. Mm -hmm. They said that Jesus is a uh, son of Allah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you read the Bible, you can see it clearly that uh, Jesus said, I cannot do anything by myself except mm -hmm. by the will of Allah. Yes. Uh, you yeah. can see it in the Bible. So, mm -hmm. this is the only difference between us and the Christians. Uh, yeah. That doesn't mean they are not uh, our brothers or respect them or, yeah, we can respect them. But the truth is one. Mm hmm. So you yeah, what do you know about, about Islam? Huh? What do you know about Islam? I just know y'all. Um, I believe in Allah really? that Gabriel gave uh, Muhammad the um, the Quran. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Huh? Uh, do you believe that? Do you believe that that, uh, you know, that that event? So when we mm -hmm. say when no, we say never... that, Go ahead. no, I'm just saying like when we say that Muhammad peace be upon him received. Revelation from the angel Gabriel, same angel Gabriel yes. that you believe in, and he received this from God, who the brother explained to you is the God of the Old Testament and the New Testament, God of mm -hmm. Moses and Jesus. Do you, yes. Would you believe that, or do you think that there is something odd to it? I say something odd to it, because um, the right, thing so is about they, they believe that Jesus is a prophet. Y'all believe Jesus is a prophet? Yes, of yes. course. But I wouldn't know if y'all believe he's a true prophet or he's a false prophet. That's why I would ask the Muslim. True. He's a true prophet. He... So here's, yeah. here's the Jesus... thing with Islam. Here's the thing with Islam, right? If we, if we didn't believe that Jesus was a true prophet, you wouldn't be Muslim. We, can, we yeah, can't be Muslim without believing he is a prophet. But but this is what he said. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. This is what Jesus said. No man can come to the Father but through me. But that's yeah, false. Sure. is true. Yeah, that's a false prophet. Oh, how's if y'all don't believe that, so, that means he he spoke a lie. So y'all believe if, that he do, um, do, that he's the way. That's what he said. Uh, he's so the way, the truth, and the life. Let me let come to the Father, but know that brother oh, he's Jesus a is a prophet. He's a prophet. He's not lying. So the, so he's the, way, the, the book the they have now, which is written by Luke, Luke and Matthew and King James and. Those are yes. so, not Jesus let's Christ. Ass let's assume. Okay. Let's assume. Okay. Let's assume let that that's, that's been said. Let's go to the Old Testament then. Yeah. You want to go to the uh, Book of Isaiah? Y'all yeah, believe in the Book of Isaiah? Cutting. You can hear me? Yeah, you we can hear, me? hear you. I so, hear with me. regards to the Old Testament and New Look, Testament, we don't just you know believe in. Let's go to the Old Testament because y'all say that the, the, about Luke. Can we um y'all believe in the Old Testament? Isaiah, the Book of Isaiah. No, we don't believe. We don't believe in no, the Old no. Testament either. Not in no. its entirety. Not in its entirety. Oh, okay, then. So, yeah, so it's so, going to communicate then because I only can speak, speak speak by the scriptures. I can't go by my own intellect. I gotta go by the no, word no, of no. God. So. No, no, we're not saying that you have to go by your own intellect. We have the same thing. We have our intellect as well as the revelation. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get all However, my information from the scriptures. Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead, okay. Mm -hmm. So, with regards to, because I asked you the question, I don't want to keep this off on, the, on mm -hmm. that event. Because yeah, that yeah, event yeah. when Muhammad, peace be upon him, claims to, to mm -hmm. receive revelation, mm -hmm. that claim is true, okay. then Islam is true. Would you agree? Yes. If he actually did, right? Uh, yeah, receive just like revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, the question, that's why I asked you the question, do you think that there's something odd about that story? And you said yes, but I want to know what is the reason? Why do you think it's odd? I believe well, the that, claim. Um, I want to know why it had to be another book at the um at the description because this book came the Bible been waved many thousand years before the Quran came. Uh, well, only six hundred. Jesus in your Quran, but Muhammad not in my my Bible, so that's what I'm saying. Well, that's why I, mean, I go by Jesus, actually, Jesus. Well, actually, this is not true, right? This came thousand years after Bible, the Quran. Ahead, no, no. Ahead. The Quran came 600 years. The Quran came 600 years after Jesus, right? Thereabouts. Oh, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. 
Now, what's interesting is that the Old Testament and the New Testament prophesize about a prophet, mm -hmm. right? Now, even Jesus prophesies about someone to come after him, right? This is why he mentions, right, uh, in the book of John, right, which is one, you know, that most Christians used to claim that he's God, right? And obviously you and I know this is not true. But in this very same book, he says that to the people, to the people in his congregation, he says, I have many things to say unto you, which you cannot bear mm -hmm. them now. But when he... Spiritual truth, right? The advocate, mm -hmm. you know, because there are a couple of verses that refer to the advocate. Yes, when he comes, mm -hmm. right, he shall guide you to all truth, right? Yes, sir. So, and we we see in in First John chapter four verse one, right, where mm -hmm. um, he mentions about testing the spirits, right, testing the prophets, because the spirits mm -hmm. belong to the prophet, right? So we, there are multiple. Uh, Passages from the New Testament that we can quote. And I'm, I'm seeing this from from our perspective. We don't uh, yes. believe that everything is 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 correct. But from your perspective, you would hold these uh, things to be true. So at, at, yes. as currently, all Scripture testifies to someone for someone to come after Jesus. So from that perspective, <coughs> it wouldn't be strange for a person to come and state, "I have been sent by God." That itself wouldn't be um, problematic because. Your New Testament prophesizes that someone will come, right? But yeah. The Quran, on the other hand, it mentions that there will be no one else after him. And when you look in the Old Testament, when you look at Deuteronomy 18, 15, 18, 20, mm -hmm. it mentions about that mm -hmm. prophet, right? You know, the prophet like Moses, right? Now, obviously, we believe like it's uh, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, and you can ask us why. No problem. Yes. But. We have the Old Testament prophesizing about that prophet. We have the New Testament prophesizing about that prophet. So why would it be strange for you to recognize and did actually come by those prophecies? Yes. So what, um, what was the reason he given um, Muhammad Quran? What was that reason for? To guide the people as a mercy for mankind to preach the so message the book of, of the oneness of God. So the Bible wasn't good enough. Good enough. They had a, the Bible wasn't good enough. The Old Testament, New Testament. So they needed another no. book that contradicted so, everything that the, the other prophet said. Yeah. So the thing is, here's here's the thing. If the Quran is indeed from God, mm -hmm. someone's got a massive echo. Yeah. Yo, yeah, can you mute yourself, bro? No, no, I can't. I came from a menu, blue China, bro. Setting, uh, yeah, the, yeah, audio, the and your, uh, okay, that's from the book of audio selection. Yeah. Someone else has got an echo. I think this brother here. Brother, out of the mute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah somebody. Guys, if you, is, is anyone here, if you have some... Uh, mute, mute yourself, um, or do it from and, the setting. Um, yeah. Oh, let me see. Um, I'm not sorry, it's just uh... Well, I didn't come from God, I came from a vagina, bro. He was talking about the... Uh, the... Do you need a different book? Yeah. So, so here's the thing. If this book, this book came from God, right? Mm -hmm. Then, naturally, it's good, right? It's good for us. Right? So this is, this yes. is the question we have to... We have to ascertain whether the Quran came from Allah or not, right? Because if it didn't yeah. come from Allah, then we're, we're, we're following something false, right? Now, yes. with this idea of, um, oh, is this, you know, were the previous books not good enough? We have, we can say the same thing about the Old Testament. Was the Old Testament mm -hmm. not good enough? That's why we needed the New Testament, right? Now, for you, as a Christian, you would, you would believe that the Old Testament was indeed preserved, and that we have it today exactly as it was revealed to Moses, to Isaiah, to David, to Solomon, to Micah, mm -hmm. right? To all of them, right? So yes. you would believe that it's exactly the same. So why yes. do you need the, Old, the New Testament? All of that is Cause correct. Because the whole New Testament was talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Right. And the like Quran Isaac. is talking about the covenant, right? The agreement between all of mankind, not just the children of Israel, as stated in the New Testament. Because remember, the New Testament isn't for you. It's for the children the of Israel. For... According to, it's not for you. It's not. It's not yeah, for you. You're for not Gentile. an Israelite. You say, not, no, he no. said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His Son." He loved the Who world that, that He Jesus... died for our sins. For the world, he died for the world. Okay, okay. We we'll, needed we'll the sacrifice, the but it became the sins. Yeah, it's not just we'll the go, Israel. We'll go. No, no, no. Well, it's a different topic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Huh? So first of all, first of all, right, this is not mm -hmm. what Jesus said, because right? now you're quoting John, right? 
Okay. You're quoting John, I'm quoting Jesus. Who is your prophet? Okay. John or Jesus? Jesus. Right. Jesus said he came to you. Yes. He came to save you the world. He came to die for the sins no, no, of the world. Quote, quote, quote a passage. I'm not asking you to reference it like I reference it. Right? No, Just quote a passage. Saying? So okay. what, where does Jesus say that? He has come for the Gentiles. Because I can to the say Gentiles. to you, does Jesus say this? Or does he say, I have come not for, uh, except for the lost house of the sheep of Israel? Yes, he died for the world. That's what Jesus, he died for the world. No, no. Does he say this? So yes. I asked you, who's your prophet? All right, where does he say this? Everybody speaks, no prophet spoke, he spoke what Jesus told him to speak. Even his, his, his disciples. No, where did the disciples say he died for your sins? Where does John, where? Peter, where does where where do the heads of the church say he died for your sins? The thing is, here's the interesting all, thing it's, here, it's, right? It's all over the Bible. Del, man. Del, Del. Go ahead. Here's the interesting okay. thing, right? Even when we, even in the Gospel of John, right, when it mentions about the crucifixion, it doesn't mention mm -hmm. he died for your sins. When you look at the Epistle of Peter, right, First Peter, Second Peter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mention he died for, for your sins, okay? When you look at First James, when you look at the book of James, Bible. yeah, I'm had to pull my Bible up. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Go ahead, I'm listening. Go ahead, listening. Yeah, okay, I'll tell you why. Okay? Because if if that was the case, the heads of the church, uh, uh, James, Peter, and John, would not have mm -hmm. told people, the Gentiles, right? continue yes. uh sorry not the not the uh, gentiles the jews right mm -hmm. to continue obeying the law including sacrifices now you quoted earlier you mentioned that jesus came for the world he died for the sins of the world right yes includes the jews correct it includes the jews yes he came for the it jews first the jews 100 percent yes the jews so why the did jews the jews first. need to sacrifice why did the jews need to sacrifice after his crucifixion who need to be sacrificed? No, did, did the Jews continue to? Did, did did John, James, and Peter not tell Paul and others to continue to sacrifice for their sins? No, sacrifice what? Sacrifice what? So, for example, animals? we have in Acts. No, no, uh, well, animal, yes, animals. Yeah, nobody stopped reading Acts. Acts after Jesus after no, the after no, Jesus no, no, died. No, no. There's no more sacrifice. Sacrifices, like even sacrifices, sacrifices. So right. actually, we still sacrifice. You still sacrifice. Y'all right? sacrifice animals? Um, Y'all sins? Yes, we do. No, not for the, not for our sins. Right? Um, we don't sacrifice. For our sins, it's right? a tradition. As I said, this is, this is something. But we do sacrifice, right? Okay, okay. So here's, I'm, here's I'm the like... interesting thing. In Acts 25, right? Mm -hmm. um, Jesus Paul, Paul, is, Paul is called gospel. to the, to the uh, Church of Jerusalem, right? He's called by James. Yeah. And James actually confronts him. He says, are you telling the Jews... Are you telling the people? You know, we've heard that the people, we've heard from the people, speaking about the Jews, right? That you're telling them that the law is no more, right? Essentially, right? I'm paraphrasing. Then, you know, then he says to show that this is not true, go with these men. There were four men, right? Yeah. And take the Nazarite vow. Now, when you go to the Old Testament, you realize that the Nazarite vow has actually the abnormal sacrifice, a part of that ritual, right? So yes. he tells. Four, he tells them to go with four other men, which shows us, which is textual evidence, that the uh, disciples, the heads of the Church of Jerusalem, were telling other people to go and do animal sacrifices right, and upkeeping Mosaic law. Right? And this is what Jesus said. He said, you know, not, uh, not a dot and jot of the law will be done until all is fulfilled. Right? Now, we know that the crucifixion is not what he's talking about, because if that was the case, right, he wouldn't have said in, in earlier in the Gospel of John that he already finished his work before, he, before, anything, before the crucifixion happened, right? We know that he was talking about everything being fulfilled, as in, until the heavens and the earth pass away, because he mentions this, right? So, I'm quoting Jesus from your New Testament, right? And I'm showing no, you you, evidence no, from no, the disciples. No, not, you say from the Old Testament, or are you talking from the New Testament? No, no, from the New Testament. Well, Jesus is speaking New in Testament. the New Testament, isn't it? So, 
Um, and I've shown you evidence from the disciples, the actions and the speech of the disciples, nice to see you. that they were telling people to continue with animal sacrifices, in the example of the Nazarite vow. Now, if Jesus did indeed die for your sins, why are the disciples, why were the disciples still doing it? Why did animal sacrifices historically only stop after 70 AD, after the destruction of the Second Temple? That's when they, they, that's when they stopped. Right, the Jews today, yes. they don't sacrifice because they don't have a temple, right? Otherwise, they still yes. would. And it's part of their prophecy, it's part of an Old Testament prophecy that when the Messiah does arrive, this is part of the reason why they don't accept Christ, right? Because it doesn't fulfill their prophecies. But they said when he, when the Messiah comes, he will rebuild the third temple, right? Why does Jesus need to rebuild the third temple if it's not needed? Are so you right? saying they're not the Messiah coming? But Jesus is not the Messiah, you say? No, no, no. You and I believe that the Jesus is the Messiah. But according to New Testament did, prophecy and Old Testament prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. when Jesus arrives, when Jesus comes back for his second coming, he will rebuild the third temple, right? And we, we know that there are dimensions given, right? For yes. what the structure will be. Now, we, the purpose of the temple was for animal sacrifice. Right? Okay. And this is part of the prophecy. Yeah. Part of the prophecy, and this is in, uh, in the Old Testament, when the Messiah comes back, he will institute the temple, he will reinstitute animal sacrifice, according to the Old Testament. And as I mentioned, the biggest advantage, the biggest evidence that you have is the fact that the disciples themselves told at least four people, right? Let's ignore all the other evidences, right? That could be. We know for a fact that five people, four people and Paul, went off and did. A Nazarite vow and sacrifice animals. Why? That's the question. Why? No, it's no more sacrifice after Jesus died. So I'm saying I don't know where you're getting that information. Uh, uh, of course, yes, of course. Still... I agree. You, I agree. Jews, don't, you. Jews don't. Yeah, Jews don't even sacrifice. Jews, they don't sacrifice no more. No, 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 Why no. is that? Isn't, isn't that strange? I, I, I explained it because there's no temple for them to sacrifice in anymore, and they can't do it. Yeah, but That's you still got to keep that sacrifice. But it's God commanded that, commanded them. Yeah. It don't matter the temple or not. Oh, God, still com God, God commanded. commanded. Well, you God commanded them to follow Jesus. They didn't. Does that mean we don't follow Jesus? Let's not. Let's not. Um, you know, take our religion from what people do. Let's take, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, because you mentioned earlier that your evidence is from the scripture. Now your huh? scripture shows conclusively that after the crucifixion of Jesus, according to the New Testament. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Disciples continue to say to people, at least five. You got, you got to give me that scripture. I, I just can't think. Twenty-five. I don't know what read Acts twenty-five. Uh, read right, Acts twenty-five. Read right, give now. my references. Go for it. Okay, I'm right. about to give it to you now. Hold on for a minute. Let's, let's go. I never heard that. I've been. Uh, I thought it was Acts twenty-two. Years. Acts twenty-five. So I, so I think 25. it's Acts twenty-five with, with regards to the with regards to the Nazarite vow. I think Acts twenty-two is something else. Is it part of it? Oh, no, I think that's when the disciple. I think it was when the disciples no, confronted Paul. This one, uh, he was, this one, Paul was getting locked up by King Agrippa. No, that's not in that scripture. Let me see. Yeah, because I don't no, read no, the no, whole no. Bible. I never. Seen. It's there. Well, you can't have read the whole Bible. It is definitely there. Um, what do you call it? Um, is it Acts twenty-five? Or is it Acts twenty-one, twenty-two? I think it's Acts twenty-five, isn't it? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Someone bring it up. I think well, I might be mistaken. I'm thinking. Probably am. Yeah. Probably am mistaken. Bible is big. I'm going to make mistakes. Yes, no problem. Yes, sir. We're just having a discussion, man. No big. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Uh, Acts 18 18. Mm, Acts 18 18. Is that when they call him to the temple? They call, so basically, Paul, Paul is summoned to the temple. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, yeah. to the church. I think so. 18, uh, oh, the man to go, uh, take a leave, brother. Nah. Oh, that's not it. So while, while, while the people are looking for it, if that's the case. Yes. If that's yes, the case. I've never seen that. What, okay, would you say? what would you say? What would you say if that's the case? If we can show I, you I to you now. Have it. Yeah, um, just let me know if you got it, because I can't say nothing to it. I got to go by the I'm just looking at Acts 21, uh, verse, Acts 21, 26. Then Paul took the men. And the next and the next day, having been purified with them, entered the temple to announce the expiration of the days of purification, at which time an offering should be made for each one of them. Is yeah, that what we're talking it. about? 
Yeah. That's, that's, the textual, that's your textual evidence. What is, now, what, what's that again? What is, what's the scripture? It's 21. 21 what? 26, you said. Uh, uh, Acts 2126. Uh, Acts 2126. You can read from Acts 2120 or. I thought you know, the where, where she, just, with uh, entered the temple and announced the expiration of the days of purification, which offering should be made for each of them, which is seven days almost into. We're talking about uh, uh, animal offering, though. What, they have all kind of oh, well. offers, sit offers. You know, what, what animal offering? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, so you know how many offers is, they have? This is Redugo. So this is with yeah, regards to the Nazarite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, what offer are you uh, talking about? It was animal sacrifice because it's part of the Nazarite vow. So if you actually look up the Nazarite vow in the Old so, Testament, it will tell you what it is. Yeah, but Paul, Paul wasn't a Nazarite. You don't have to be a Nazarite to say it's a Nazarite vow. All right. So check it out. If someone can bring yeah, up I'm the Nazarite vow, yeah, but I'm just yeah, yeah. Uh, just like you know, just so other people can do it as well. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So we know that the, uh, an offering has been given. What are offerings given for? What are these? Because you mentioned burnt offerings, you know, or vegetation offerings, or you know, like flour and so. What were these and offerings for? Money, what was the and, purpose of them? And money, and money, money offering. What was the it, it, what were the offerings for? What was the purpose of them? Sin, right? Yes, yeah, some of them were sin offering or mm. peace offering. It, mm. it did, all offerings were for different things. Yeah. Burnt but, offering was a different thing, a peace offering for different things, drink offering for different things. Not everything was sin. Yeah. But this is why I'm so speaking sin. I don't know what kind of offering the... that was. Right. Well, this is what I'm saying. It's the Nazarite vow. Right. So this is why I think Ramsey is going to bring up the Nazarite vow. We'll show you exactly what it's for. Yeah. Sorry, but no, while he's, second. that's fine. That's fine. While he's bringing up, let's say, huh? I, like, let's say I don't speak to you anything about the Bible. Let's say I just speak to you about the Quran, right? If I yes, show you that the Quran yeah. is from God, does that mean that the crucifixion is from God? It's from God. If the Quran is from God, if the Quran is from God, does that mean the crucifixion is false? No, it's not false. No, I can not never false. deny Christian. Uh, okay, Christian. No, no, no. Right now. <laughs> Right, foul is in number six one twenty one. We gotta get better seats than that. Six. Hey, you, you stole number from the six. Sorry. Number six. No, number six. Number six twenty one. Was it? Yeah, Can six one twenty one. Oh, oh, six one through twenty one. Yeah. Uh, someone read number it. Six. Six. Number one. second. I found found a I I found out what the reference was. But let me look it up. Actually, look at what it says. That's fine. Oh, someone. So, Number here's the thing, Del. Yes, uh, Del. Um, yes, sir. If I can show you that the Quran is from God Himself, yes. why would that make the crucifixion still true if, he, if God is telling you it's not? Uh, can you, you show me where that's not. Give, is denying that? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking me. you a question. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, here. you got to you gotta show me that person. Oh, I will, because I'm just waiting for him to uh, uh, bring it up. Uh, I'm saying if. Yeah. Y'all believe it never was a crucifixion, though? That's what y'all believe? Like, Jesus never died? He was never crucified? Y'all don't believe that, period? It was, never, it was neither killed nor crucified. It was made to appear. He just died. He just died. Allah, died. Allah, like no, he's home. still alive. He's still alive. Never died. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Y'all believe he's he gonna die. Yeah, he's gonna die. He's not dead he yet. Say, yeah, he said he lived for everlasting life. He said he's never gonna die. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I just said. I just said. He's gonna die. Just hasn't died yet. He's gonna die like a man. We we have we have a prophesized that what, like when he's gonna die, right, not exactly like dead and everything, but when he returns, and he fulfills his messianic duty. He will reside with the people for forty uh, forty years, and he will die. He will be buried in Medina. Uh, so this is Numbers chapter 6, verse 1, uh, uh, reading onwards. Uh, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, if a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord as a Nazarite, they must abstain from wine and their fermented drink and must not drink vinegar made from wine, from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape. Let me just find where it talks about sin. Sorry, once because it's it's twenty one verses long. Sorry. Uh, yeah. 
count if ah here uh I think this is it if someone dies similar in the week yeah then on the eighth day they must bring two doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance uh to the tent of the meeting the priest is to offer one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to make atonement for the Nazarite because they sinned of being they sinned by being in the presence of the dead body the that same day they are to concentrate their heads again and must rededicate themselves to the Lord for the same so period very, of very clear that the offering being made was for sin offering. Mm -hmm. right? It's yes. very clear that the offering that was being made was for sin offering. Right? Okay. So this is this is what we're saying. Right? That, that was verse according ten. According right? to Acts yeah. So according to Acts and according to the action of the disciples, right? Yes. Sin offering was yes, continued, continued after the crucifixion. So this so, of it, so, in of itself. Okay. Sure, you know, from the people who learn their religion, who learn Christianity from Jesus, mm -hmm. they didn't believe this. Extra they didn't game. believe that his, yeah, they didn't, they didn't believe his death, right, was oh, right. for any sort of sin offering, right? And like I said, yes. they didn't believe um, he died. There is actually no historical evidence that the disciples believed he died. And here's the evidence from the New Testament, right? Because when we see the accounts of his resurrection, right, and the disciples being told about it, what we mm -hmm. see is that they, do, they weren't expecting it. Like, what? No. And the women came to tell them. They were like, what? You know? They didn't yeah. know. They had no idea. He, then he came and met them, right? He met over uh, them. This is what the accounts say. Then they start preaching. This is what the accounts All right, this is what the, the accounts book, say. Right? But you, you read the book of Acts. You believe the book of Acts. You just showed me Paul's scriptures. No, no, no. I, I'm showing you from what you believe. Right, according to you, what yeah. I'm this is what I'm displaying to you, though. Right? I'm explaining to you well, that your your New Testament, your Old Testament, is a testimony against the belief that you have. Um, do they all agree? One, and you, and uh, let's go to the scripture. Say, because you say Jesus never said he died for all nations, right? Just the Jews. That's correct. No, no, he never died. No, no. I say he didn't die for anyone. He came for only the. Uh, but you say he never said that, though. You remember we had that discussion. You never said that. Yeah, he, he, he never said that he came for everyone. Said, that he died for everyone. Now, can, sin. now can I show you that Go scripture? Can I show you the scripture sure. that he said it? Sure. Go for All it. right. Go to Acts twenty-four. I mean Luke twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Should I do that? Luke? Or... Twenty-four, forty-four. I, I guess. I guess I'll make. I can make it easier for you guys. So forty-five. Luke twenty-four, forty-five. Yes. Forty-four. Yeah. Forty-four to forty-six. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm aware of that. Okay. He. He. Yeah. He, t he refers back to the scriptures, right? He says that this is what the no, scriptures we just gotta read have it. written no, about. No, we got to read it. No, let's read it. Let, okay, let's we'll just read see what it. He said. Go ahead. Okay, read what, it. what was it again? Luke 24. Luke 24. It says 44 45, to 46. 47. Let's go for 44 go to 48. Just go, just go for the whole thing. Yes. That's what Jesus said. What Jesus is reported to have said. All right. Yeah, I'm at Luke 24, uh, verses... 44. 40, 44. Through 48. Uh -huh. Through 48. Okay. 44. Okay. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written mm -hmm. about me in the law of Moses, the stop. prophets, yes. and the Psalms. Stop, 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 stop. stop there. Just, just, just so we can, so we can uh, underline. As what okay, was written ahead. by Moses and the prophets, right? The law of Moses about oh, Jesus. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Go ahead. And the, and the Psalms. Continue. Then he opened their uh, their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, okay. "This is what is written: the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance mm -hmm. for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning okay. at Jerusalem. You Ever are to all nations. Yeah. And beginning all at nations. Jerusalem. Excellent. Yeah. But Jews was first. Telling you. No, I'm going to tell you, tell you something. Jews was first. Here, here's, all nations. Here's, what, here's, here's something, Bell, all right? I'm going to well, say something now that you're going to think I'm just delusional because it's clear in the text, right? He said, all nations. I'm still going to tell you he never said that. Now ask me why. Okay. Ask me why. Why? 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 <laughs> because he appealed, because he appealed to the scriptures, all right? He said, what was written in the law of Moses was written by what was written by the prophets and the Psalms, right? 
So he's appealing yes. to the scripture, and he states that it was written oh, sorry. that the Messiah will rise, will, will you know, die and rise so, on the third day, and he will preach. He's quoting now. He's guys talking about quoting religion. What the what Moses? This is this is who he's appealing to. Moses, David, so, because obviously so. the Psalms, potentially even Solomon so, as well, because Solomon uh, and the prophets, right? Particularly so Isaiah. Who'd you, okay. Well, who Jesus talking about? Moses him. in the scripture, or are you talking about himself? Who's going to die he, on Thursday? No, no. He, who, oh, he's talking about himself. Talking about? No, no, no. Okay. He's talking about himself. Okay. He's saying that he got this information from scripture, as per the law of Moses, as per the Psalms, as per the prophets. It, it is okay? That's a lot of that's a lot of scripture to go through. Now, name me it, it, any no, scripture. It's, it's plain. It's plain. No, name right. me. No, but Jesus is appealing to scripture, right? As you are. So when you appeal to scripture, you quote scripture. So if Jesus is appealing to scripture, he'll be quoting scripture. Do you have to... Where in the scripture does it mention anything about the Messiah? Ha Mashiach, dying and rising on the third day. The sins of the world. If you can quote me that Old Testament prophecy, then you have a point. If you, you say cannot, and you have a problem. What you say again? I'm going to get you all scripture, whatever you need. Okay, I'm quote me anything scripture. from the Old Testament. Quote me anything from the Old Testament. Anywhere. Forget just Moses, David, and the prophets, right? Anywhere. Even you go to Daniel and Matt. Uh, but what you want me to explain? Because I'm explaining it. What, what you want me to just tell me? Show what you're me, explaining show me make sure everything where, clear. where it says. Show me where it says. Uh, the Messiah will die and rise on the third day for the sins of mankind. Because this is what Jesus says is written. It is written, and he's quoting it. So you have to quote the scripture. No, we, we're gonna read. We gotta read that scripture. Read that scripture one more time, because I don't want you to take stuff out of context. Can we read it one more time? Because you 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 you, you picking you and stuff out. I want just this. Oh, yeah. Okay, go okay, ahead. Right. 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 Which verse was it? Luke twenty. Uh, Luke uh, chapter twenty-four, verses forty-four through forty-eight. Just listen to it. Just listen. Right? Yeah. And we'll it's underline as we right? go. Okay, yeah, no I'm, problem. It go is ahead. Plain. I agree with you. It's, it's, go ahead. Sorry, one second. Oh, here we go. Uh, 44, he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everla everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the hold prophets, up. and the Psalms. Right hold up, hold up, hold up. Everything is filled right, about so who? Everything, everything that is about fulfilled who? and written. About yeah, Jesus, about right? Jesus. Okay. Yeah, and written. About Jesus. In the law of Moses. And Jesus. written in the law of Moses. About Jesus. The prophets. Jesus. About Jesus, right? About Jesus. About Jesus. Yes. I've heard of that guy. Is, so... It's very clear. He's saying that what is about him is going to be found okay. in the law in the law of Moses, prophets. Okay, let's read it. Now let's, Psalm, now, now let's right, finish. Carry on. Yeah, carry on. Like, like, you can't see my phone. Go I got to go there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can just read my phone right there. There you go. See, I'm joking. The uh, <laughs> then he opened their mind. This is verse 45. Then he opened their <laughs> minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, "This is what is written: the Messiah will suffer and rise from the stop, dead stop, stop, on the stop, third stop. day." All right, stop there. Stop there. All right, so he says, "This is what is written: Messiah yeah, that, yeah, will die yeah, and rise on the su third day." Continue, Ramsey. Should suffer. Should suffer. Yeah, yeah should suffer, die, and rise on the third day. Excuse me. Was that Daniel? Right. Excuse me, was oh, that Daniel Luke. that you were just reading? Luke. No, we read, yeah. no, Luke. No, this is, this is Luke. Luke. Right, what about Daniel 244? Daniel 244. One second, one second. All right, let's no, finish this. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. Then he, opened the, yes. then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance mm -hmm. for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Nice. Beginning at Jerusalem, you are a witness. You are witness of these things. I, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Is that what this is? Uh, that's okay. it, yeah. So he he mentioned very clearly that you will find in the scriptures, right? yes. particularly the Lord Moses, suffer. the prophets, and the that he will suffer, die, yes. and rise on the third day for the forgiveness of sins, for the remission of sins, right? Where is he that? He's going to be preached. 
Mm. If you have a point okay. to make. No, the, okay. afterwards he stops quoting and he tells right, you, and he tells right, me, he addresses the disciples. Let me just go. The disciples, let me just go. Says this is what he's gonna. Like, this is what you will preach no, and so on and so forth. The prophecy itself. Prophecy itself. Where is it in the Old Testament? Also, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Minnie, because you're mentioning that Jesus never never said this. Another case that people make about this is that, I, I forget what gospel, but here, as you guys uh, clearly heard, Jesus is ordering his disciples to stay in the city of Jerusalem, whereas, I forget which gospel, Jesus explicitly told them directly after the crucifixion to leave. Leave the, to leave the city of Jerusalem. So I mean, that, that's, that, that's another that's another approach you could take to demonstrate potentially that Jesus. Well, there, there's so many things. Say, well, I want to I want to I want to show Dell that Jesus yes. never said these words right? because even though it's in the scripture, we can prove that he never actually said them because Jesus would not quote something that doesn't exist. Jesus. Yeah, he wouldn't quote something that doesn't exist. If it's, right. if it's not in the scripture, you, the, the thing is, if you don't find it in the Old Testament, you have you have two things. Either that prophecy was true, it did exist, now it's not there, we cannot find it anymore, right? which shows Hello. corruption, right? An omission. Right. Yes. yes. Or, or that Jesus was lying. And you and I will, no, no, uh, what do you call it, will not accept that. We will not accept that Jesus will make up a prophecy. Yes. Huh? So those are those are mm -hmm. the two things, and both and, okay. and neither are good. You can go, you right? can go right over uh, there. Uh, for a Christian. Hear me. So who's winning so far, the Christians or the Muslims? It's not. It's not we just debate, man. It's not. It's, it's not, not about winning. Just more. debate. It's, it's, it's not there, a game. There's it's more of us. System. I think we're winning. No, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, y'all winning. My hands. <laughs> I uh, winning or learning, right? Someone like keeping, yeah, right. Who, someone like keeping yeah, okay. score, like what's going on? <laughs> no, nah, we're not okay, keeping so score. Psalms 118. Let's, let's not get sidetracked. So let's not By all means. Go for it, mate. I'm going to join y'all, though, man. I'm going to join y'all, man. I'm going to join y'all. You want me to quote Psalm 118? How are you explaining Daniel? How are you explaining Daniel? We'll come to Daniel. We'll come to Daniel. Let's go point by point. We'll go point yeah, by yeah. point. No. We need to finish a point first. Uh, I have Psalm 118 right here. Does anyone like which which verse? I want him to start no, the the whole yeah. Old Testament. Find no, a verse. Just, no. Find a passage where it states. That the I am aware of some of the psalms that they would quote for this. However, I almost like, for example, oh, yeah, I mean, have you ever seen that? You know that debate? Uh, Wasn't it um, was a couple the son of Judas? The son of Jonas. No, one second. So you know that debate with Zechariah yeah. Hussein, where he, with James White, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. he goes through like a long list of psalms that uh, to, to prove well, the contrary. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is. Like, I already, this have, is, a hand, this is I already have a handful of passages that Christians will quote, quote often. Yeah, that, you know. So, um, I mean, th this is the interesting thing, right? When we speak to Christians in particular, right? We yeah. can, alhamdulillah, we can display that Islam is true, right? From the Quran and from the Bible. We don't need to go to the Bible, but we can display Islam being true from the Bible because this is what the Quran says about the crucifixion of Jesus. All right, I'm ready. Neither killed him. Go for it, Isaiah 53 and 10. Oh, I love it. Just... Oh, boy. Isaiah 53 and 10. Okay. Okay, let's 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 go through. Um, what do you call it? Should, should the, I go? Through? Should I should I read it? Now you you believe you believe no. Now you believe that Jesus, what do you call it, was a suffering servant because he's not God, right? So he's a servant, yeah. I believe he's God believe that too. This is what we got, that, that's another debate, though. You believe he's, I believe that Jesus. You believe he's God. Think, okay, no problem. Yeah, the Bible, yeah, you believe he's God. Yeah, yes. You believe he's God. I'm manifesting the um, Yes. Okay, uh, you believe he's God. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the scripture, the Old Testament refers to a servant. He, when he was and in the flesh, he Jesus. came as an example. Or when well, he rose up God, in the dirt day, when he came back into spirit form, he said, I'm the beginning. No, he's still God, right? Even in the flesh, he's still God, right? Yeah, in the flesh. Right. But he was a legal to call so, himself God in the flesh. But he said, Son of God. They would have crucified him right then. He killed him for saying the Son of God. What did the, okay. Well, in the Bible, the Son of God. God. Of God. Called, uh, son of God. No, hold on, hold on. What do they call it? No, now, just give me, um, thing so, um, is, Isaiah 53, hmm. before we go on this, Isaiah 53, Old Testament. Isaiah 53, and 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I'm going through, I'm going through. No, the thing is, what you're missing, you're just going to verse 10. Right here. Is, is, oh, it, is, it, is it the whole, <laughs> is it the whole thing that is prophecy, or is it just verse 10? Excuse me? Think carefully. 
Is it the whole chapter? Is the prophecy of this? Okay, I hear, it... I hear feedback. Let me get closer. Say it again. Yeah, I hear a lot of Harris, Harris, could you please mute yourself? Oh. You're, you're, um, you're echoing. Yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, please, uh, please, please, please mute yourselves please. if you're not. Yeah. And um, by the way, I mean, am, so I, am, I, echo, am I echoing? By the way, <laughs> I'm not echoing. Am I? No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, so America. Isaiah 53, is it the whole chapter that is the prophecy? Deal with no, 53 and 10. You can start 53 and 10. Yeah. But you can read the whole no, thing, but 53 asking, and 10. No, no, I'm asking, you, I'm asking you very clearly. Is it the whole chapter or is it just verse 10? You can read the, the whole chapter, but verse 10. You, you're right. trying to get what you um. No, what I, no, for. I know what but I know what verse 10 is about. But the thing is, you need to if you if it's the whole chapter, so look at the whole chapter. You can read the whole chapter. Because because it refers... it short. Yeah. No, no, I can no, read but, the whole chapter. Okay. Can we no, read but it? The thing is, like you and I both, you and I both familiar, right? You know about the verses after verse ten mentioned. He will live mm -hmm. to see his right. He would live to see his offspring, right? To yes. see his seed, right? Well, who was Jesus' seed? All creation, his seed. What do you mean? No, it's oh. not. Oh, Jesus begat. Creation. He is our. He is our father. Yes, seed refers to there too. No, no, no. In Hebrew, in Hebrew, seed refers to biological. Seed. Zara, zara. Yeah, zara. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. So, did did Jesus have a biological seed? It's spiritual. Everything is um, scripture. Spiritual. I know y'all. Muslims don't believe in spiritual things, y'all. Oh no, no. We believe. Yeah, we're Muslims. Believe we believe in spiritual things. We believe in spiritual things. We're Muslims. We're not like atheists. We do. Oh, supernatural. Oh, okay then. All right, sorry. My apologies. My apologies. God, God is supernatural. Well, of course, we believe in, <laughs> in the supernatural, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? We okay, believe then. in the spiritual, divine um, healing, and all but that. What we, that. But what we are saying, we are saying, we are saying that there is a very clear. You know when something is spiritual, when something is literal. Right? For you know, with regards to the seed, this is literal. What right? Because the prophecy, the because prophecy, I gotta, I gotta prophecy the is about real things, right? Prophecy is about yes. real things, right? Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So, when when Isaiah fifty three talks about suffering servant, by the way, it doesn't mention anywhere in Isaiah fifty three that it is talking about the Messiah. He will. You haven't read. Doesn't mention about the yet. suffering. We, we keep now. We got to read the scripture, but we're not reading it. We're skipping over it. Okay. No. Okay. I, fair I, enough. We'll read the whole chapter. I like to read Here's and the, explain. He, I like to. I like no to read problem, and no explain, problem. man. Here's here's what I'm looking for. Remember, as per Luke. Chapter 24, right? Mm -hmm. We are looking yes. for what Jesus has apparently said, which is uh, the prophecy would state that it's talking about the Messiah. So he will mention the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He will mention that he will suffer. He will mention that he will yes. uh, rise from the. I thought I could do a third finger. I can't. All right. So I like I was trying to count the things. Like I this. No yeah, yeah, I, I realize I can't. Oh, um, I can get as far as two, and then boom, five missing so the rest. One, two, three. <laughs> Five. Four, five. Yeah. So we're looking for him being the Messiah, him suffering, him uh, dying, rising, and in, and going to, and telling the people to go to nations. Those are the four uh, things that we are looking for in Isaiah 53. Now, before we read it, do you think it's all there? What's all there? Those four things that he mentioned in Luke 24. He said, "This is written." It will be talking about the Messiah. Messiah mm -hmm. will suffer, die, rise, for the for the forgiveness of sin, and he will tell and he will um, what do you call it? Tell the people to go to the Gentiles. So these five things. Sorry, it wasn't. Four, it was five. These five things are they present in Isaiah? They, they're in different scriptures. I got to go to different scriptures, but they it, it's these prophecies. Okay. So you're so, gonna find him in you gonna find him some in Isaiah. Okay. You're gonna find some in Psalms, him being pierced. You're gonna find him okay. being bruised for our iniquities in our Isaiah. Oh, you're gonna yeah, find yeah, Isaiah nine and six that a, a child is born, a son is given. She call him wonderful, yeah, yeah. mighty God, everlasting father. Isn't it's all over because, the scripture. That's what the Bible is talking about. The whole uh, okay. all old text. Well, no, 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 no. So We're step not by step, man. Isaiah, look. Step by step, all right? All right? Let's go with Isaiah fifty three first, okay? Isaiah fifty three. Where does he mention where does he mention uh, Messiah? Let's go with the first point. Right? No point jumping all over. Where does he mention the Messiah? Isaiah fifty-three. One passage at a time, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just go through the whole thing. Where does he mention the Messiah? 
here's the here's the thing, though, right? In the entirety of the yes. New Testament, in the in the entirety of the Old Testament, not one scripture says Ha Mashiach, the Messiah, not one. So read through what? Isaiah 53 and show me, show me the Messiah. All right, go to Psalm. You, you, you heard, you heard, you heard. All right, go to Psalm. No problem. Show me no, where it on, talks on, about the no, hold Messiah. No, hold on for a minute. Hold on. What's your question? Hold on for a minute. Yeah. You had your hand up. You know, I'm giving you time to look. I think this gentleman here, what's his name? Uh, Crip, Cryptic. Oh no, 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 no questions. Not yet. Oh, okay, I thought you, you had your hand up. That's why. Sorry. And by the way, did they add a, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt, but did they add a, can you actually watch Hamdan and Yeftar over there? Uh, no, I think that's just a banner. Oh, just rough, add, yeah. advertisement. I gotta add that one. Yeah, that, that, that is good, though. That is good. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah, bro. They should put Yemenite front up there, man. Come on. It... Yeah, I'm not front. Brother no, Ramsey, why not you yeah, yeah, even be your uh, clubhouse I'm nobody. logo? Nah, you are oh, somebody. All right, so they should put uh, maybe some son of God or something. Some of the groups of clubhouse, maybe they should put them up there. No. Uh, you also we're give talking your about the clubhouse logo. Now. You should do give good. Yeah. Yeah. Are the the team coming today? Uh, I think uh, we got we got. We got I think tomorrow they're going to be showing up. Mm. And we got uh, Rumsey. Becoming uh, pretty famous as well. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be shy, Rumsey. Don't be shy. We did, we did actually have a very successful weekend on Clubhouse. We had some very big rooms open for the Palestinian conflict and also the Syrian conflict. And mashallah, we had a big turnout. Big turnout. Lots of education. And a, lot of, and a couple of Zionists pulled in. And we uh, had some fun with them, to say the least. Uh, what's uh, what's the room called? In clubhouse. And it's, the, the, the rooms were uh, they ended, but there's multiple clubs in clubhouse. Oh, there's, okay. um But if you want to follow these rooms, there's uh, Ch Dawa. There's Warriors of Allah. There's um, One Route to Paradise. There's many Muslim clubs. Kalamology. You know, Brother Khalil, uh, he has his own. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Brother yeah. Khalil's. Too. Actually, his is the biggest one. His is the biggest uh, English-speaking club uh, Dawa platform on clubhouse. Okay, I didn't know that. I just Thank help. You, I, I don't. I don't own any of them. I just help run a few of them. That's all. Okay. Yeah. You doing your part? No, man. It's just you know they, uh, they give uh, they give different people abilities to open rooms using certain clubs, even if you're not the owner. So you know, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they act, uh, some brothers actually started a YouTube channel. Specifically devoted to um, Dawa clips on Clubhouse. Mm, not mistaken. Nice, mashallah. mashallah. I think I think they posted their first video just uh, just yesterday. Was it posted yesterday or the day before yesterday? I'm not quite sure. I saw it this morning. So audio only. I think it was. Uh, it was a. Very, I think it was. Uh, it was a very basic name. It was. Uh, I think it was Clubhouse. No, yeah, Clubhouse Dawa clips. I think that's what it's called. Clubhouse Dawa clips. Basic name. Clubhouse Dawa Club. Right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave for a little bit. Where you going? Clubhouse Dawa Club. I think there's only. I only saw one video on there this morning. Going to the world. I need to fix up the things and. Hello. Wherever you go, just send me a come. My battery died. Send me a come visit if you go. You can come back anytime, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come back in. Look for look for the scripture. Look for the scripture. Yeah, 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 man. States what Jesus yeah, but... has stated in Luke 24, and when you come back, right, mm -hmm. you can tell me that you have not found it, because I've looked everywhere for it. Okay. I know the scripture very well. Right? Yes, sir. Um, and I'm not saying this out. Of, I'm not saying this out of arrogance. I'm just saying this out of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. There is it's no. Good, man. There's nothing there. I will, uh, nothing in the Old Testament that references the Messiah, in particular. Right. There is okay. nothing that mentions that he will. And you can look at all the commentary. You can look at the church fathers and everything, or what they've said. No, don't look. Don't look. Just, just, just go ahead. I'm just saying. Now, I'm just saying want, if, if. Now, but what's right. your, what no. you want me to answer you? That, he, that the Messiah never came. That's uh, all what you want. No, the I want you to show coming? me where it. Um, no, no, no. You look. You and I believe that the Messiah is coming. There is no doubt about that. Right? You know I'm saying what you want me to show you when I come back in the scripture. I want you to show me when you come back, where uh -huh. the Old Testament says that the Messiah will suffer by and rise on the third day 
the remission of sin. That's it. Okay. Right? Because that's what Jesus said is right. being quoted from the Old Testament. Right? The law of Moses, no, we're just talking from about the, the prophets, no, from the no, Psalms. No, he's, he wasn't quoting that from the scripture. He said Moses was written up him as the Messiah. That's why he, he's got written, to No, but then, he got, but then he goes on to say, read it again. And he says, he it is written, it is, oh, because Jesus he says very coming. clearly. No, no, no. Oh, he Jesus says, coming. it is written. No, no, no. This is what he says. In verse 47, right? It says, mm -hmm. it is written, the, Mas the Messiah, right? And then he mm -hmm. says, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the third day for... Uh, obviously, I'm paraphrasing for the forgiveness of sins, and and then he explains to the uh, disciples that they would go out and tell all nations, right? But when yeah. he's putting the scripture, when he's what is written, being very clear, it is written, the Messiah will suffer, rise from the dead on the third day. So that's what I'm asking for. Where he does the Old written. Testament say this? Yeah, it, exactly. So if it's written, let me see where it is written. That's all. Where in the Old right. Testament? Yeah. If you can't anyway, find it now, you can always come back later. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you can, can always come, come, back, come back later. Come back later, no problem. We're actually here. We're actually here tomorrow. Actually, same time, same place. Yes, so we're here know. tomorrow as well. Same time. The question: time, What kind of group is this again? It's not uh, really your group. Your belief is wrong. Our so, belief is right. I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. Who <laughs> asked that question anyway? <laughs> that was me. Right behind you. Right here. That was you. Yeah. So yeah, this is a event where we discuss, you know, religion mostly. Um, sometimes politics, but our purpose here as Muslims is to invite people to well, Islam. Nothing more if a Zionist came in here. So Ooh, I dare him to come. What do, you, what do you believe in? Yeah, would you debate him? Who me? I'm spiritual. No, a debate, a debate is where two people like, in present sense? evidence and this and that. Oh, that would be uh, energy. Like, I'd wipe the floor. I believe in the Most High. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so who, who would be the Most High? We did that uh, yesterday. High is the most. We did that yesterday in Clubhouse. That's some. Uh, that makes some no sense. You're just defining a word by. I'm not even asking you. To no, you, you ask me who. You ask me who is the most high. What's your high. book? Which, what, what's your book? Emotional. Right. Lots of no? logical fallacies. What is my book? What's your, what's, what's your holy book? He doesn't have a book. He doesn't have a book. I don't. I don't read man-made. Uh, every doesn't have a holy thing created by a man. State of Israel is doing this. I go. Oh yeah. Well. I'm very serious. Syria has these problems. Okay, so. So you don't yeah, yeah, read yeah. it. So you it's you believe that there is nothing that could be intellectual. We can't actually deal with anything we present. To come to realize. Uh, of... being a Buddhist, I mean, you're saying you're totally. Yeah. Well, I just yeah, feel, I feel like questions. We just move them. We just keep um, moving. Um, has been yeah, 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 altered yeah, that's, that's, so much thing, yeah. throughout times of life. <laughs> it's hard to. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Quran? I'm gonna listen. Let's talk about the Quran. You believe that the Quran has been altered? You guys don't mind. I'm sorry. Quran. Um, are you familiar oh, with Quran? Quran? I honestly, if yeah. has it been written by man? Well, it has been written by man. Right. So one thing I learned is not authored, written down. Most I always said, difference. trust no man. No, no, no. So it's, it's it was okay. written so, down. Well, hold on. There's a difference. What do you mean by trust no man? So if a person tells you something that's truthful, would you not trust them? Uh, why would I trust somebody that I don't have proof of? Good. Is proof done on a spiritual level or on an intellectual level? Uh, everything is more spiritual. Intellectual, well, I feel like that's more flesh. Right, so intellect it has no, you know, it's like there's no weight to it to determine truth? I, I wouldn't say that, but I feel like the intellectual part has been given to us and we ourselves took upon it and Altered it, made it our way, uh, I and it, make. I, I, I agree with you. With you, you have know. Done that. So but I not feel everyone. like, not everyone, correct. Right. I feel that not everyone, but I also hmm. feel like that. Let's say, you ever played telephone, right? When you was a kid. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so if I tell you, how can I? Well, I know where this is going. What if I show you? What if I show you that the Quran is not the game of telephone? I'm sorry. If I can show you that the Quran is not a game of telephone. And that oh, I never even said it has it been written by man. No, no, I know, I'm not saying you have, but I'm saying because you're 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 talking about transmission now. You're not talking about mm -hmm. what has been passed down to us, what people have, you know, modelled, what people have corrupted. I agree with you. Right? This is something that we take very seriously as Muslims. Right? Of course. So this is what I'm yeah. saying to you. If I can show to you right. that the Quran yeah. is a is a scripture which has been written down by men, right? But authored 
by God, right? Okay. What would you say to that? What would you say to that? Well, that's, well, that's like, that's like, no offense to nobody like this. I'm just, you know, just, that's like God gave me a banana, right? I probably don't like the word banana. So I'm going to tell the world it's an apple, right? Mm -hmm. It's a fruit. It's still a fruit. It still nourish your body. Still do what all I can do, but it's not an apple. I, I think he's it's confusing not authorship and um, writing it no, down no, like no, no, mumbling. So no, no, it's not. Like think. He's saying what they call it the technicalities now. He's referring to semantics because of something. You know, you might actually mean something else, but you're really playing semantics. You know, rather than being very, you know, pre being precise with your definitions and your claim. Right? Am I wrong mm -hmm. or am I right? So so, but continue. I'm listening. Okay. So the Quran, we have a living tradition, right? Where in in both in manuscript and oral tradition, right? Which means now we have two things that can check one another, right? Now okay. the primary mode, the primary mode of Quranic transmission is recitation. Now, I don't know if you've heard Muslims recite the Quran, most likely during Ramadan. Oh, yes. uh, Ramadan. I have. I'm a logic. Uh, I have Muslim family members. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Now, well, I have a quick question. Read? Sure, go on. Quick question. So, if there's only one God, correct? Yes. Why are there so many different churches? Yeah, well, we're not going to answer that. I can't can anybody answer that? I mean, I can. I no, no, we can no, answer that. We, 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 we want to talk about Islam. Uh, you want to talk about you refer to If you refer to Islam, right, you could say, well, why are there so many different texts of Islam? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. No, it's one thing. We all believe in the same God. We all be there is no mm -hmm. there is no difference with regards to who mm -hmm. Allah is. Right? I or feel like there is a difference to where <clears throat> a certain rules are set. Because, for example, I used to be Baptist. I used to be Christian. So, mm -hmm. I, or when the ways I was taught was a certain ways of living and how to <laughs> talk Sorry, and how to Could we all make a a, a circle, a, a bit, a wider, a wider berth, please. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yemeni and uh, uh, yeah, everybody uh, spread out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stay here. We'll stay. Yeah, we'll you stay here. Stay, we'll stay in here. place. Just everyone spread out. Now, whoever wants yeah. to ask a question, she, he, he or she can enter the circle. Yeah. All right. No problem. So enter, enter the ring. So in <laughs> tight. So here's the here's the thing, right? With regards to with regards to legislation, this is all secondary. Or secondary stuff. I'm talking to you now mm -hmm. about the primary stuff, right? Belief in one okay. God. They belief in one in one God in Islam, despite the seventy texts that we have, all of them believe in Allah exactly the same. That, that He is the only one worthy of worship, right? At least this is the claim, right? This is the knowledge mm -hmm. of it, right? And what, what has been done in practice is the, the reason why there are seventy three texts. The knowledge okay. is the same, right? Um, and the sources are the same. Now, so have y'all heard? Of, can... Have you heard heard of the King James Bible? Yes. Yeah. What's the, the difference between the Bible and the Quran? Matter of fact, that's why I want to know. Okay. Okay. Back, man. So the, Bi space. the difference between the Bible and the Quran is this, right? But the Bible has been compiled by men, right? The Quran has been authored by God Himself. This is the claim. Okay. So this is why I'm saying you and I both agree about m men corrupting things, men transmitting things poorly. You and I both agree on that, right? But I'm saying that the Quran is not this. This is why I went to the Quran first. Usually you would hear me talking about God first, right? Mm -hmm. But for you, I believe, if I can prove mm -hmm. that the Quran is not a game of telephone, it has not been corrupted by human hands. And the claim that it is authored by God can demonstrate that claim through the you know the preservation of the Quran then you should accept it if you are sincere with yourself or sincere with me you sincere with yourself right okay okay it's like that perpetual so I can well, show to you uh, that this <laughs> has not been corrupted by human hands the promise here's the, here's the thing the Quran mentions right two things one we're pertaining to this subject one is that it's authored by God Know that this book is from your Lord. Okay, this is the first. This is the first. Second thing is that the same Lord, same God, Allah, is that we have revealed this book, 
and we will be the preservers over it. We will preserve this, right? So the claim here is the preservation of Qur'an. Right? Now, if this is a promise by God, then there should be no power on earth to stop him, right? Which means if it is corrupted, it's not from God. Okay. Right? Falsification test. Yeah? Okay. Right. So today in the 21st century, now bear in mind that this book has been revealed 1400 years ago, nearly a millennia and a half ago. Now today, we recite the Qur'an. Okay? And you can you can check this out, right? You said you've got Muslim uh, family members, you can check out their recitation. Do you know any, any Arabic? Just, just out of curiosity. Uh, nope, I don't. I am okay, no one problem, of the 12 no tribes of Judah. I'm an Israelite. No uh, problem. So, um, nope. you can defer to people who know Arabic, okay? Or the experts, right? You can go to the Western experts, right? In Germany, in France, they do uh, where they study the Quranic manuscripts, right? In Turkey as well, right? This is Western okay. academia. I'm not even appealing to Muslims now. Now, you can go to them and you would see the manuscripts which date 1400 years ago, right, and 1300 years ago um, are exactly what we read today. Exactly. Letter for letter, word for word, pronunciation for pronunciation, at least with regards to the manuscripts that have the diacritical marks that take the pronunciation. You will see exactly the same. In manuscript mm -hmm. form, in present day, mon in present day prints, and in recitation, it will all exactly the same. And when that happens, what does that show? That something's been preserved or not been preserved? Something being preserved? Something being preserved. If that thing has been preserved, then it's been promised to be preserved by one who claims to be God. What does that tell you? Um, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I hope we are all our friends here. Oh, if you say what you want answer, he's going to hit you. I don't want to say the wrong answer, he's going to hit you. Come on, speak <laughs> no. freely. Yeah, all right. We're not going to get offended. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all we ask from you, all we ask from you is one thing: to be okay. sincere with yourself, not to us. If you lie to me, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me. It oh yeah, doesn't it doesn't do any good... grown. I mean, I think we all grown. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but yeah. You'd, you'd be surprised how many people lie to lie to themselves and think they're lying to us. Right, so this is oh, all we ask: no. sincerity and honesty. Well, yeah. So. Um, Go my end. All right. So I feel like, to me, honestly, the experience of yeah. life, right? It's been a lot of deceitful things happen. If you can, we all agree on that. Like as of, uh, let's say, one is green, but really is red, or somebody tell you is this, but really is that. You won't know until you're older. It's not about. It's not about what people tell you. It's not even about your own experience because experience is subjective, mm -hmm. right? What you have experienced might yeah. affect you in one way, what I experienced might affect me another way, right? If you were hit with an illness, if you were hit with an illness and I was hit with the same illness, and you were patient and I was not, right? Mm -hmm. We've been affected differently. Now, I might think it's a curse, I might think it's a, a blessing, right? It's very okay. subjective, right? This is why I speak to you on evidence, right? This is why when I talk about the preservation of the Qur'an, I appeal to evidence. The fact that the evidence that we recite the Qur'an in exactly the same way that we can see the manuscripts recording it. So, in these are, and these are manuscripts, right, that we have lost and we were not uncovered up until the late 18th century, early 19th century. Sorry, late 19th century, early 20th century, right? Okay. So, this is about 1200 years removed from the source. We didn't have access to these manuscripts, right? at least because we, we didn't find them, right? They were lost mm -hmm. to us in terms of the manuscripts. Now they've been found. Now when we have examined them, we realize that even though we didn't have the manuscripts, we were still reciting the Qur'an according to those manuscripts. Letter by letter, word by word, diacritical mark for diacritical mark. It means sound by sound. And this is how precise it is. If I said, Maliki Yomuddin, people here will pick it up and they will know what the mistake is what pronunciation of one of the words is not fine okay right it would know <laughs> at least the ones who know at least the ones who have memorized the quran and <clears throat> know how to recite it and they've got their tajweed so what was the mistake anyone repeat it again <laughs> 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 
Multiple people. Middin. Multiple people picked up straight away. It's not your mu, it's your mildin. Yeah? This is just a die Okay. Right? There was nothing set up. Right? They didn't know what AI was going to decide. They didn't know what mistake I was going to make. Right? But they knew. Your it. When they. There you go. Correct sir. Yeah. This is the. That we have preserved it. And this is done by humans. Right? I mean, it's done by Allah, but through humans. Right? Through us being the media, the, 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 the means for it. So God is doing it. Right? He's allowed us to be the means for its preservation. So this idea that corruption happens, 100%, we agree with you. We, we've witnessed it right? with the Torah, with the Gospel. But with the Quran, we have a different claim. And this is why we have just demonstrated a very small example of how we know that the Quran is indeed preserved. We recite the Quran according to these manuscripts, even though we didn't have them. So this is proof of preservation. Okay. Uh, and you can and you can explore it even more. I'm not asking you to tell you know say oh you know if it if why it makes sense to, if what I'm saying to you makes sense and it makes sense alhamdulillah, right? If you require more investigation, then please go and investigate, right? And check out the manuscripts, check out the modern prints, right? Check out the re people who recite and see how it all fits, <clears throat> letter by letter, word by word, sound for sound. Can I interject real quick? I just wanted to sure. say something real quick. You were talking about churches and stuff, right? And how if there is indeed one God, why are there so many churches? And yeah, and I said I that. I could bounce that back to you by saying, in this room alone, we have so many different people, right? So many different skin colors, so many different ethnic origins, backgrounds, stories. We could all speak different languages. But it all still answers to the one that is that we're all still here, right? And so just because he might speak in Arabic... I might speak in English, someone else might speak in Spanish. The message is still the same, it's just delivered by a different tongue. To look at the geographic areas and how everyone broke things down, and it's a matter of understanding across the wide spectrum. This man is claiming that you know, the world came unbroken through his ancestry, all the way through modern day, and then they find you know, information that corresponds with what they're saying verbatim that they never had access to begin with. That's a great legacy to have. That's that's a very important legacy, and that's a great standing stone, especially for scientific reasons. I can relate to that because as a Freemason, a lot of what we're taught is taught verbatim. It's not written down. The reason why it's not written down is because if it's written down, it's easy to corrupt. If you have to take it from tongue to tongue and a man has to learn from another person, then you learn every little thing. And I also learn verbatim. So it's a matter of, of what word was spoken, exactly how it was spoken, to the point to where just the very uh, structure of the sentence itself, and words that might not necessarily have been placed into the same order today, and spoken in an older tongue, were placed in a completely different order. So to bounce on the church thing, it's a matter of where you were in the world at the time. All of the information is the same, it's just a matter of how you perceive it, how you understood it, and how you passed it to those around you. Right, but this is the thing. This is goes actually it goes back to what we we're saying about things being corrupted, right? Because they're in different geographical locations, different understandings. You know, maybe mishearing, maybe a mistake. Because you know, like corruption doesn't happen. Just oh yeah, from and lost in translation, of course. It happens. It, it, some, sometimes it happens from accident. But here's the thing with the Quran. Quran has been transmitted across the world, right? So we're talking about geographical locations, different tongues. Right. Yeah, of course. And everything. Right. But here's the thing with the Quran. Despite, we have two modes of preservation, the textual and the oral, right? Now, wherever you go in the world, it's exactly the same. I do not own a from. Sorry, say that. Said that? Someone said something. Okay. So... I'm here, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was listening. Oh, fine. Okay, cool. So, uh, you go anywhere in the world. Right? I'm not saying just in the UK or just in America, right? Anywhere in the world. Right? You have the exact same recitation. Right? The exact same manuscripts. Because these manuscripts have been taken from across the world as well. Right? Across the Middle East, across the Islamic Empire, right? So, yeah. the geographical uh, aspect, in, um, what do you call it, affect the preservation. Multiple languages 
in an effect the preservation. The language has, itself has been preserved, right? The seventh century Arabic, because we have modern colloquial Arabic and different dialects are of that are Arabic, right? Um, that hasn't that hasn't affected pre uh, the preservation. What's just your, give me a second. Can I ask a question. Yeah, no problem. Just give me a second. Let me just finish this example, uh, this explanation. Inshallah. So we have so many factors. Right, you could trans transmission, right? The, the scribes themselves who scribed these manuscripts, right? They could have got okay. it all wrong. Right? They could have been offenders. They tried to change it. And there could have been so many factors that would have contributed to the corruption of this text. And yet, in 1400 years, it's actually 1450 something like that. Um, nothing, no, nothing has happened. Right? Not one thing has changed from it. So if in the Quran, what did the because I never read the Quran, so I'm I'm curious. Um, yeah, what did I'll invite you did to the Quran? It. What did the Quran said about Satan or the devil or evil? He is he. Allah says this about uh, Satan, right? He is the accursed and he is our enemy, right? And he always says when you when you read the Quran, seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan. All right, so seek refuge with God from Satan, right? And it even tells us about Satan's fall, about how, uh, what his state will be in, his tactics to misguide us. The Quran is very clear on his tactics. It tells us this is how Satan is going to approach you. He's going to come to you from the front, from the back, from the sides, you know. And we have the uh, Hadith tradition as well that tells us the more specifics about how he tries to do it and examples of how he tries to mislead people. Right, the Quran as well tells us how he's going to cause a mother, uh, sorry, husband and wife to be split. Because it's about black magic, and that's uh, forbidden, you know, because this is a tool of Satan. You know, how gossiping is not allowed, right? Because this, you know, you talking bad behind someone's back. So, Quran is uh, definitely not from Satan. It's definitely against Satan, right? And this says it very clearly. But the point for you. Because you 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 seem like a person who's very meticulous about uh, ever, you know making sure that things are precise, right? things Correct. are as they should be. So this is why I invite you to investigate the preservation of the Quran. Right? You can you, even if you don't know Arabic, right? You can take a modern Quran today and you can look at a, a picture of a manuscript, right? and you'll be able to you know see, see that the uh, letters are the same. Okay, and in some okay. manuscripts, some manuscripts you might not because of the of the style of the writing, you know, the script. So you might not. So you might need to look at you know more modern manuscripts, maybe uh, we'll call it 12th century manuscripts where there's a bit clearer. But 7th century manuscripts, you still can tell. You can still defer to experts, right? Um, okay. And look at these manuscripts, right? So this is something for you to look at. But here's the question to you: When when you in Sorry, uh, uh, quick, uh, when you uh, invest in it, and you realize that man, I have said to you is true, meet yourself, inshallah. Sorry again, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah sorry. Well. So, when you investigate this, and you realize that the Quran has indeed been preserved, as promised, by the author of the Quran, who claims to be God, and you realize that 1400 years, no human agenda, mistake, geography, language, culture, ethnicity, or any sort of factor you can think of has affected the preservation. And you should know at that point that this claim is true. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I'm sorry, I was standing. I'm Yemeni, Yemeni. Um, uh, Mike here had a question uh, for you here yeah. in the back. Oh, no, no, I understand I, I... Your, your point, yeah, if I'm honest, because books don't change. That's the nature of them. Written things don't change. It's not a higher power that keeps it the same. It's the fact that it was written once. I could say the same about Harry Potter. Since Harry Potter has been released, it's not changed. I could say the same about the Bible. I could say the same about sh the works of Shakespeare. And the 500 years, Shakespeare hasn't changed. So I don't okay, understand so, oh, that's okay. a point to prove no, no, no. point. I, I can't kind of say that's insane, not changed. Actually. I won't uh, say some of them will be You changed. can read Shakespeare exactly as it was written 500 years ago today. It hasn't changed. That right? is not some true. people will try to change it, some adapt it. I won't say that's true. That's not, that's not, uh, it's not true. It's 100% true. I would, true. I would true. disagree. I would disagree. And, and just the reason. No, I think it's reason. true. 
And I'm sure it's with with Harry Potter if, doesn't with Shakespeare. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. I'm just saying it's not true okay. with, with regards What's to Shakespeare. Claim? Shakespeare don't have we don't actually have much of what he originally wrote. Um, they they're not they're not dated to you know his contemporaries. Um, his the, contemporary life. But the with regards to Harry Potter, because uh, as we can see things are being printed, right? Uh, what has been printed and stuff. Now. The, the well, thing here question. is, it's not just, uh, it's about the, know. hold on, let, let me let me address this question, let me, about here, okay. let me address about this question. Okay. Now, you're saying books by their nature do not change, right? And when you look at the works of antiquity, you see that you're completely wrong about that, because writings of antiquity have changed. You can evidence this, right? Textually. Sorry, mate, I'm trying to speak to him. Move a little bit to the side. Sugar daddy. Thank you. So, <laughs> how is it? Look at that. All right. So, um, we can see this antiquity, right? So, ancient ancient works, right, and medieval works, have been proven to be, have been changed or edited. Now, even with Harry Potter, you think that the final version we have has not been edited? It has. It has been changed. What J.K. Rowling has written is not what has reached us, because it has been edited. Right? This is the whole point of editorials. Uh, and this is done regardless of what work it is, whether it's fiction or non-fiction. Okay. But this is this is where the Quran separates itself. Um, it hasn't been it hasn't been edited. It hasn't been edited at all, and it has been removed. It has been uh, uh, transmitted to us in a period of time where. Books by their nature, or, script, or any sort of writing by their nature, were either lost or corrupted, right? Because they've been changed, and people would have to copy them by hand. There were no machines to do them, to do so, right? And yet, the manuscripts that we have 1,400 years ago, bearing in mind they were lost, like these manuscripts have been lost for a very long time. Right? And now, when we have rediscovered them in the late 19th century and early 20th century, right? most of them in the 20th century. We see that the manuscripts correspond to what we have been reciting. Not, not word for word, even letter by letter, pronunciation by pronunciation. And I don't know Suppose, if you were here when I gave the example. My, my point is that doesn't, to me, prove a higher power. It just proves people have protected something. The same way that I can recite a child's nursery rhyme, having never oh. read it, because it was taught to me by... My parents, yeah, but people yeah. taught to them by their parents. But if someone wanted, but if that, someone wanted to, if someone wanted, no, no, no. But the thing is, you're missing <laughs> the amount of factors, right? That can be that can come in where a preservation would be impossible. People's agendas, people's interpretations, people's political yeah. aspirations. You know, the agendas. What do you call it? Language. Right? Language is a barrier. Right? Remember, this text is only in one language. It's not multilingual. One language. Language that is not spoken by 80% of the people who have transmitted it. Right? So you have language problem, right? geographical problem. How this how this has been taught orally over over the world, right? As the century. Uh, I'm sorry. Right. Well, the song, song in the Netherlands is way different than, than the one in America, but they have the, it, it has the same tune, but it's way different. What's the tune? Sorry, say that again. Uh, the lullaby song in America is way different than the lullaby song in the in the Netherlands, but it has the same melody. Yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is, there's a lot of there are a lot of criteria. There's a lot of things. No. There are a lot of things that can affect preservation. And it's not just about the preservation, it's the claim itself. The claim is referring to preservation of a text, right? Exactly. By God, right? This is the claim. This is a preservation of a recitation by God, okay? Now, he's making this claim. Right? This is the claim being made, that the all-powerful, most high, is the one that's preserving this, okay? Which means that where, where no matter what claim? happens in the Qur'an, so the Quran mentions made a claim two in the book understand. that the book will yes. never change, which we then lost yeah. the book. Then we found the book. No, 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 like, no. It, we lost the, no. We lost how? the manuscripts. We didn't lose the book because the book has been recited. There are two modes of preservation because we always had 
like contemporary manuscripts, right? But I'm talking about the earliest manuscripts. As the times went on, we lost the earlier manuscripts. But there was always a physical copy, right? But when we re recovered the the earliest manuscripts dating to the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his contemporaries, how do you we know that? Covered those manuscripts because they've been carbon dated. Uh, a lot of them have been carbon dated. Some of them have been done through orthography and paleography and other. Well, that means they, there was a time when they didn't exist. No, they've always existed. Uh, they, the the well, sex has they, always they carbon existed. dated. Then there was a date before that date that you they, you carbon dated them from. What? No, the carbon dating works within a, like a, a right. It can tell you how many really years ago something God. was. Yes, it tells you so, how many years. Uh, the yeah, the uh, like uh, roughly when, right? It gives you like a roughly when, yeah. So range, roughly when. there was a time before range, that roughly when as well, as well, wasn't there? No, no. So, so I'm they saying didn't the earliest, always exist. The earliest manuscript. No, no. Oh, it's so about the, the materials. Manuscripts. Yeah. Yeah, so it's about the materials. I'm not saying about the, uh, the the text. The text you use orthography and paleography for uh, to distinguish the text, but uh, then you would have to come up with conspiracy theories like um, did you know, the sciences they keep this animal things. skin for you know 300 years so they can write on it, and then so that later on you think it's going to be carbon dated, and you you go into all sorts of uh, crazy <laughs> theories because yeah. no one knew that it carbon dated would ever be a thing, right? So, Carbon dating is uh, usually pretty accurate because the people would have, because especially parchment. Or, or you could just say it was invented by humans at some um, point in history. Brother, Mike, you could say that. Uh, you could say can that. You but come then for a how do you explain a, a claim khalas, made khalas, by humans khalas, which khalas, humans cannot khalas, control? Khalas. So you have to okay. you have to understand that. In regards to this preservation, you have to understand Ooh. is it within the capacity of a human being? Because remember, the person who's made this claim, if you don't believe it's from God then you would believe it's from a human being. Now, the person who brought this to us was an illiterate man in the 7th century desert. How do you know he was illiterate? illiterate? Because we have, I mean, we have more historical information Quran. about him than, any, than anyone in history. Right? Multiple so attestations. So he was, he was not tainted by education. He just came up with this stuff Even and the somebody else wrote it down. From down. His enemies as well. uh, yeah, we know, we know 52 no people wrote it down right? because he had 52 scribes. We know them by name. We know their biography. Okay. Okay. We know they're um, all of so, them. So, so people can be very convincing and they can have influence and they can get their scribes to write it down and then you get some document which but becomes here's the, later no, revered here's very much. No, but here's the thing, right? Like I said, you've got to think about capacity. This capacity, this person was, not, was illiterate, so he couldn't have attained knowledge, right? Of things that were written in the Of course, you can attain knowledge. Not. You don't have to be. No, no, not. You don't have knowledge to be able to. No, hold on. Knowledge. Able to read and write to be able to attain knowledge. You. Let me finish. Right, because okay. we're not. Because when you look at the Quran, then you will talk about. Then you will know what knowledge I'm referring to. I'm referring to knowledge of the scriptures, right? Knowledge of philosophy, knowledge of uh, what, economics, sociology, ma marital life, right? business. There's a multitude, right? Legislation, so law, spiritual people military. are uneducated. Prophecy because they've no. not they've not been educated. I, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying way. that the uneducated people are dumb. I'm talking about the capacity. Right? I'm talking. About this scripture contains so much. In fact, the scripture, right, is, claims to have guidance for all of mankind. Right? To be complete guidance. Well, these are old claims that are being made. Complete guidance. Ever change and never, never changing. Right? So it will never change. It will be applied till the end of time. Right? Same legislation. Now, for a man, no matter how intellectual he is, for a man to produce a legislation that will be guidance for all of mankind in all places, all times, all conditions, covering everything, covering absolutely everything. No matter how intelligent you are, you cannot. Do it. Let alone do it without editing your book. Right, without providing changes to it. Right? So this... Wow. Um, Your daddy can mute yourself. So you think, you think a person can come up with legislation today that will be applicable regardless of any, regardless of any factor 1,400 years from now? Yeah. So in, in the it's year, happening all the time. No, it's not. Well, name me one. Okay, fine. I mean, one legislation, other than the legislation of Islam, where a person has provided legislation that never needed updating, that worked 
It's not necessarily a legislation, it's a philosophy, oh, right? Oh, it's the claim. It's, I'm talking about legislation. Claim here is not philosophy, it's legislation. Yeah, well, legislation Biden. is just enforced philosophy. No, it's not enforced philosophy. No, no, legislation no. Is just Can we law. use uh, the American no, no, no. Constitution as an example, maybe, or something? Well, that's been that's been updated. How many, how many amendments oh, yeah. has, uh, has happened to the Constitution? Fair enough. You're basically talking about spirit, spirituality anything. and how it's been... Uh, used by various religions and documented to be applied in a certain way. Talk about the claim of the book here. I'm not talking about claim of the book is that it has been preserved by the Almighty, right? And I'm saying the capacity for human beings to preserve it, it's impossible for human beings to preserve a book by themselves. There is no evidence in history, even if you're talking about modern day printing, things have not been preserved. Because they have been either edited, redacted, or changed in, in some sort of capacity, right? Have editions of books, right? This doesn't happen. Because human beings by their very nature are limited. They make faults, right? Mm. Mm. For something, for so, something, yeah. for something to come from a 7th century desert, right? Which is transmitted orally and textually over 1400 years without any, any human factor whatsoever being able to tamper with it this is not something that is possible this is this is you need one. to comprehend this yeah hmm. it's I not don't... possible now you can tell me all day long because by our very nature because as i explained by our very nature we cannot do anything i don't either. know our very it's nature our very nature has been toyed with all of my all of our lives everyone here has been conditioned by the system which operates that we operate in some people have been conditioned some people are conditioned i, I, I don't know it, well i think anyone wearing a headset right now has been conditioned because you are part in of a Western certain extent yeah, yeah, no 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 the, 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 you, you, what you're talking about is influences right there are certain influences conditioning is a, is a different ma matter altogether well, those influences include school and everything we were taught at school. I, ag I fact, agree. We were taught to get but jobs. This is, this is why we. And this is why we. I, I, I agree with you. It's why I never. You know, I didn't not attend. I didn't attend university, and I really don't care much for the education system because I see that they educate you just to get a job, not to make yourself su uh, successful. This is I get right. this. I get there are influences. I get there is condition. I get this stuff. But what I'm saying is that the human being, right, the, the, the nature of a human being. Is that he cannot do something flawlessly. He cannot make a claim by himself and 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 know with certainty that in a millennia and a half his claim will be held true by human beings, by other human beings. Right? They can't even keep promises to each other. Uh, you, uh, by the way, I'm going to meet you at seven o'clock. Oh, turn off at seven ten. I can't even do that. Yeah, am I supposed to rely on people for 1400 years to preserve a book that I made a claim that will be preserved? Taking into consideration that they might not understand no, the language, they, they might become popular and take a hold, and lots of, lots of copies of that book can be made, and so therefore it can be passed down through generations. And it doesn't necessarily need to be edited. No. Oh, name me a book that hasn't been edited. I'll come to you in a second. Name me a book that hasn't been edited. Apart from the Qur'an. Well, it doesn't need to be. Maybe it has. I don't know. No, I'm saying, no, no, no. Oh, I'm telling you, you now. The fact is, it exists in print Hello. somewhere, so therefore it can be passed down. Oh, it don't... We're not, we're not talking about the passing down, we're talking about preservation, right? Anything can be passed down. The question is, was it passed down accurately or not, right? Just give me a second. You wanted to ask a question? No, uh, no. I just wanted to ask you, what does he believe in, as and what does Colin believe in? Oh, that's fine, not a problem. I, 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 to be honest, Wait, is he, is he, he, he believes in a Christian? Is not, be, not, I'm not being host? disrespectful. I'm not oh, being yeah, disrespectful. Just, I don't curious, care what you believe in. Just curious. But just curious. I want, I want you to understand why we believe what we believe. If you understand why we believe, what we believe, then it might cause you to think. Who, who's we? Hands talk up about your who's, who's with this guy? Because I don't What's understand that. Mostly. I cannot raise my hands, but you're all, you're all like disciples of this guy. Okay. 
No, 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 but you say we, I, I need to understand who you mean, that's all. Yeah. We, are a collective, it's a collective, uh, we as Muslims believe we are the yeah. we as Muslims, brothers of one Ummah. Yeah. So the here's what? the thing, Colin. Ummah umma means nation. Ummah is the Arabic word for nation. So, okay. Colin, here's the thing. Right. Now, you and I both know, you and I both know, that it is impossible, right? For any hum for uh, for any human to make a claim that a certain text will be preserved and free from any influence, right? And the reason I say that you and I both know is because whenever I gave you ex whenever you made a claim and I asked you for an example of a claim that someone could provide legislation, right? That doesn't need to be changed, uh, or a text doesn't need to be edited. You could provide you, you weren't able to provide an example for neither, right? Okay. To prove that this is possible. Uh, you might say this is an argument from, uh, uh, from silence or from, you know, an argument from silence. Just because we don't have something, right, an evidence for it doesn't mean it's false, right, or it's true, right? And you might mm -hmm. say that. But the caveat to this fallacy is that if you would expect, right, something of that nature, then there would be evidence for it. Right? No matter how small, it, you would expect evidence. So if you, and, and, with the multitude of literature that we have attained throughout the centuries so, so and millennia... So you're telling me there's only one version of the Quran? I don't know. I've never read it. There is only one I version. I don't know. Of the Quran. It's not telling now, you here's, only now, here's the thing. Now, here's in different the thing. languages, hear... though. No, no, no. It's only one. It's not... The Quran is only in Arabic. Right? This is why when you I've see... It's never been translated of... to English. you telling me that? Really? No, no. Hold on, hold on. When I say that the Quran is only in Arabic, when you see the English translations, when you open up the cover, it will tell you this is the translations of the meaning of the Qur'an. Right? It's not the Qur'an itself, because the Qur'an okay. itself is, is revealed in the Arabic language. Right? So it's only in the Arabic language. Translations are there to facilitate the meaning to people who don't have access to the Arabic language. Right? So that's all it is. So, you know, okay. German, French, whatever. So, but n neither of these are the Qur'an. It's called the Qur'an because, you know, obviously, people want, you know, you want to identify as that's, that's what you're reading, right? But it's actually, and it clarifies, this is the meaning of the Qur'an. Right, or as, as close as they can get it, because obviously, as we know, things are lost in translation. You're not always going to get anything. I'll give you an example, right? In chapter, th in chapter 3, verse 144 of the Quran, there is a word called, uh, that says khalat, right? There's a word in the Arabic, it says khalat. Right? Now, this word has two meanings in that exact same context. But in English, you cannot convey both meanings, so you'd have to pick a meaning. But what the translators do, they would convey the meaning for the immediate context, because it has an immediate context and another context, right? Historical context as well as a general context. Um, so they have to pick, right, which which meaning. So they give you the immediate context because it's more suitable for the uh, historical narrative that it has been revealed in, okay? But this is why mm -hmm. things get lost in translation, and I'm sure you appreciate that. Um, so the Qur'an itself and the, the Arabic itself, uh, that has that's always been right? exactly the same. Right? Um, and, and as I mentioned, when you oh yeah, with regards to your with the versions, yes, there is only one version of the Quran. Now you have people come and tell you, and they would be true of this that there are variants within the Quran. Okay. Now, the Islamic uh, claim is that the Quran, the recitation, has already has been revealed with these. Uh, these variants already existed, and we actually have them documented from way back. It's present in our manuscripts, in our earliest manuscripts. So it's not just something that we're saying, God, oh, you know, to get out of it. Oh crap, there's corruption. We have to come up with something. Oh, well, it was already revealed. No, it's in our manuscripts. Okay. So there will be people that come and tell you all and say, oh, did they tell you there's only one version? No, there's two versions. There's three versions because they have a change here. They have a different word here. They have a different pronunciation here. You already know about this. Because when we say there is only one version, we're saying that there is only one Qur'an has been revealed from God to us. Now this one Qur'an has its variants with it, right? because this is the way we are, so, we are to recite it. So when you look in our manuscripts, you would see that this is present. Right? And this is why 
the earliest manuscripts don't have the diacritical marks because it allows for these different pronunciation, these variants. Okay, so it allows for that. And this is how it's been transmitted. And as I mentioned, don't just have the transmission. We have the biographies of the people who transmitted them. Biographies of the people who have uh, scribed them. Right? So we know about them. We know about them historically. We know their names. We know their fathers. Like for Abu Bakr, for example, we know the name of his horses. Some of his horses. <laughs> Forget his family members. Right? He, we know some of his horses. So what is the importance right? of the fact that there is only one Quran? So the importance of the fact that there's only one Qur'an is to show that it hasn't been changed. So that the promise, right, the, if there was multiple Qur'an, what would you, what would you listen to? Right? This is a guidance from God, right? It's only 600 pages, right? You, smaller than a Harry Potter book, right? So if you read it right, and you ponder upon it, you would start to see the guidance. Because it's a book of guidance. It's not a book of science. Now, I, earlier I mentioned that you can... It contains all of these, right? Well, this is only when you start looking deeper, but it's actually guidance, right? You have guidance in your economic life, you have guidance in your marital life, in your societal life, and all of this stuff, right? But it requires a bit more pondering. It's not just, you know, a superficial reading. And I know this because I used to be a superficial reader as well. Right? So when I, before, when I was reading it, just superficially, I was like, okay, great. You know? Excellent. Some guidance. But then when I started pondering upon it, I started to become more intellectual and able to... Uh, lead my life in multiple areas, right? whether it's my business, whether it's my marital life, whether it's with my parents, siblings, you name it, right? can do it. Um, so what, what do you say so to uh, people who criticize, people who take the Quran too literally uh, uh, and basically try and subjugate people because of it, you know, like women, and don't give women rights? What do you say to I, those I, people? Yeah, I say to them, first, stop your oppression, right? Whether it's you're killing people, subjugating women, oppressing women and children, whatever sort of oppression it, oppression it is, even if it's they use the behind Quran. someone's as a, as, a, as the reason for it. Yes, they do. They yes, use they the do. Quran. I agree with you. I agree with you. 100%. They do use it. They use it in a way that it's not meant to be applied, right? So, for example, right? so the subjugation and beating of women, right? they use the Quran. Right, they say in chapter 4, verse 34, it mentions to beat your wife. Yeah. And it says not that. as a reason. They use it not as a reason. They use it as an excuse yeah. for what they do. Yeah, exactly. It's an excuse. It does say this. Yeah? We're not going to lie. In chapter 4, verse 34, it says beat them, beat your wife. But it's been explained to us how to beat a, a wife who is disobedient, who is causing problems in the household, right? E extensively, right? Not, not just like... Oh, you didn't get me a cup of tea. Whack. No, this is this is silly. Right? That's why we so have the, hadith. The right. well, it so should the never be Islam. acceptable to be your wife under any conditions. No, no, no. Let, no, here, no, no. Here, let, no, me, no. let me explain, this. You, let me explain, no, let me explain it to you. Prophet, peace be upon him, explained what this verse means and how to apply it. And he explained, it is like taking a toothpick and tapping it oh. gently on, on her hand. She says, ow, uh, you've gone too far. So it's, it's a sign, it's a symbolic discipline. Uh, you cannot, and the rules were very clear, you cannot hit the face, you cannot b break bones, you cannot it's bruise her, you, you cannot cause any harm whatsoever. Right? So if she goes out, you've gone way too far. You've broken the rule, beating her. This you is how it's been explained to the Prophet. Give me a second. But even if you're speaking ill of your wife, and telling her what to do, then you are setting a bad example to your children. Okay. So that even that, um, you don't even have to touch. Her okay, so let me let, no, no, so let me no, no. So if you, if you, if, first of all, this sort of stuff should never happen in front of your ch children. Even if it is just a tap, that shouldn't happen in front of your children. This is why Islam teaches us: when you have an argument with your wife, you don't do it in front of your kids. You don't do it in public, right? You just don't, right? Keep that between yourselves, okay? Um, so you, your children should never think it. When it comes to telling your wife what to do, why is that? Why is that the case? It's because the man is the leader of the household. Right now, we understand in the 21st century, we have this idea of uh, uh, sometimes women lead the household. It depends on how much you earn or, you know, what kind of degree. And there are many things that sort of determine who's really leading the household. In Islam, we have a very objective that the man leads the household. This isn't because... A woman is not capable. Rather, uh, the wife of the Prophet, upon him, Aisha, 
she was teaching the, the companions about the religion because obviously she was his wife, she learned the most, being with him all the time. She was the first scholar of Islam. Right? We're not saying that women are not able, right? Well, then a woman can contribute, right? A woman can say to her husband, well, you know what, you, you want to do this, I think we should do this. A man can, um, you know, think it over, and if she, he realizes that she's correct, then he can go with it. If he thinks that she's wrong, then he will go by his own why, decision. Why is it assumed so, that the man is going to be the leader? So no, it's not assumed, right? This is how it's legislated, and the reason being, right, is because a man, this is the beautiful, this is the balance, right? Man's intellect will over, overcome his emotion. Whereas for the most part, a woman's emotion will come overcome her intellect. So a mother, bullshit. for example, or a wife... It's bullshit. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It Sorry. It will, it's not. A woman's, a woman's emotion, right? Well, it affects you generalize some it. All you're doing make. is generalizing. Saying women are like this, men yeah. are like this. No, it's this not, I, did, I never... I never it's no, generally I never generalize, choose right? what I'm saying. saying this... Is, Saying for the, but it's like, not, for the most it part. doesn't have to be generally too. You don't have to generalize. You just have to take, allow no, everyone for, to be for the scope equal of mankind, and allow for them to be equal. Talking about when we're talking about guidance for mankind, right, it will be like that, right? It's going to be a package deal, right, for everyone. Right? Yes, there are going to be some cases where a, a woman's uh, uh, emotional control will be better than the man's. We are not saying that this is impossible. We're saying generally, right? This is the case. Now, is that a negative? No, right. Because if it was a negative, then a woman would not bear a child, right? Because if a woman's intellect overrid her emotion, she wouldn't keep a baby, right? Because of the amount of pain, right? Intellectually, oh, a woman wonder one will go through, through that pain. Oh, right? Nonsense, nonsense. She, You're no, reading too much like, into it. No, no, because it, intellect, when, when people say... You're saying talk about intellect, that women wouldn't have baby because they know it's going to be painful. They know it's going to be painful. They know that. Right, but what... No, no, yeah, but what they, is it, they what want is, it. What is it about a mother? What is it about a mother to carry that baby, go through all the pains, and raise them and everything? It's not intellect. It's the, it's the affection. It's the emotion. Right? This is true. This is objectively true. It's right? a bit of both. The, the mother... The, we don't. No, we don't have intellect, traits. We don't. Intellect, women don't have one set of traits. And men about, have another. I'm talking about. No, 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 no. Bring amounts of all that. the traits. I never said that. Never said that. Right. I never said that. I'm talking about the primary. The reason a woman decides certain things is because of emotional involvement. Right. Yeah. She gets involved emotionally. And I gave the example of a baby and raising the baby. It's very hard work. Right. But they would do it out of the affection. Right. And this is why you would see children when they want affection, they would go to their mothers. Don't go to the fathers for their affection. They go to the fathers for, you know, the, that, that harshness, that, that matter-of-fact stuff. Right? But for the not mothers, so the mothers that go to... Well, no, he's, not, he's talking in a general sense. You need case. to understand it. I'm not saying this is always the case. I'm saying generally. I'm not saying no, this is always the case. General, in a general sense, that means it can't apply. It cannot no, it be, mean it can't it cannot be legislated for. General... No, a generality doesn't mean... Because you're saying it's one rule for one, one rule for another. No, no. Based on the general about... principles. Hmm. We're not talking about... Well, how does it's, the it's the difference theory. between generalities and all and being all... Right? This is not an all-inclusive statement. Right? This is a general statement. Right? So, likewise, what they call it, with a man, when a man has to make a difficult decision, right? It requires a certain intellectual strength, right? And men are, are naturally more capable of really kind of shutting off their emotions, right? This is why we are capable of being harsher than women, generally speaking, right? I'm not saying all the time, right? Sometimes you can have a woman that is a total, you know, nuisance, right? In terms of, you know. That may have been yeah. observed, yeah, so, thousands of years ago, but it's been proven not to be the case. Well, time the case and time today. again. Time and time no, it's again. The it's the case today. Generally speaking, it's the case, In right? general, yeah, because when, we're, when we're conditioned to, to be made. like that. We are we're trained by our parents, who were trained by their parents to be like that. Oh, no, no, no. See, look, there's a, there's a thing, right? Because, yes, you, we can talk about the nurture aspect, right? but by the very nature... Okay, and this is why, like, even today, when we have this idea with, um, 
with the LGBTQ community, right? When you look at homosexuals, for example, right, you would see the exact same traits. You would see one that is masculine and one that is feminine. They're both guys. But you would see that one is takes uh, adopts a femininity. Right? Now this is not because because if you talk about nurture, well nurture today, two guys is fine. Two masculines fine. Naturally what do you see? You see that one wants to be a feminine, wants to be the sub of the relationship and the other one wants to be the dom of the I relationship. I don't know actually. I know, I know that that's what, yeah. how it's portrayed in the media but no, I don't no, you know, I don't know outside I have, of that. I have, I have met I have met and conversed with uh, many homosexuals, right? And though I disagree with them, I've conversed with them, right? Explain to them how the, how this behavior, right, shows the traits of uh, of heterosexuals, of homosexuals, right? Because this is a common trait, right? That femininity is something that attracts masculines, right? And that masculine uh, thing. And this is why you would see that a lot of men, and you can look at polls, you would look at many men, many men do not want a woman, right, that, what do you call it, will be, that's bad for them, right? Because they want to retain uh, masculinity, they feel like they lose it if a woman is better than them, right? And this is not because misogynistic, because it takes away from their own nature, of being the alpha, right? They don't, they don't want to give that yeah, alpha yeah, yeah. status to a woman, that. right? Not because she's not because she's not worthy of it. It's because that's how they are, right? And likewise, women are hypergamous. They would seek out a man who is an alpha. They would seek out a man who would give them security, right? And what what do you require for security? Strength, determination, those harsh attributes, right? And they seek this, right? And this is why you would see if a woman leaves a man, it's because she finds someone someone else who can offer her security, that you know, that safety, that comfort. Yeah, but aren't women supposed to be modest and humble? Yeah, so are men. Um, um, men are supposed to be. Uh, aren't men women supposed, supposed to be modest, to be modest and, humble? and humble? They leave so a man. Men. If they leave a man, uh, this, this isn't even like nature. That a woman, being... you cannot, you cannot fault a woman for leaving a man who isn't living up to his duties. When it comes to okay, Islam, well, who, Islam puts who, all the blame on who men. Who is a woman? Who is a woman to tell me what my duties are? I mean, my duties woman are has every in, right. in the Bible. A woman, or, uh, in a woman has of... every right. A woman has every right to tell you what you are obligated to do as a husband no. to her. No, yes. absolutely. absolutely, of course, not. it's absolutely. written. Of course, it's written. As the Bible says, "Love your wife." No, no, no. Says you should See, love yourself. Right. Well, in Islam, in Islam, right. So, if a man does not hold to his obligations to his wife, a he has to feed her. He has to clothe her. He has to put a roof over her head. He has to participate. That's the nature. In... That's the nature hold of on, a man. He, no, he has, he has why do to women leave men? Hold on, give me a second. In Islam, it is so it is so intricate that a woman that a man is obliged obliged to look good for his woman. Right? Because today we see a lot of men expecting the women to look good for them when they've got a beard. Really. In Islam, this is not the case. In Islam, if you want a woman to have curves, then you have a six pack. End of story. Right? And, and if a woman leaves a man because he doesn't have a six pack, what kind of woman is that? No, 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 no. Actually, in Islam, this is fine. If a woman leaves a man because she is no longer physically attracted to him, because a woman wants an attractive man, I think it's just the one, it's a one-way street where we only want. But physically attracted, no. or men, are humanly physical, attractive, or by the physical heart? attraction? I mean, how physical attraction is a man. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Physical attraction is part of a woman's. Is part of marriage. It's part of the initial attraction. We don't no. just walk up and meet each other. I don't agree with that. I think that if you, second, con if you connect with a woman, whether you are physically attracted or I, not, no, you no, can no. be attracted. Some people, I just think some it's people, connection. Look, look, some people, some people. This is why I speak in generalities. I'm not talking about the special case. Yes, there are some people who get attracted to a person's personality when they look when they look terrible, right? Uh, at least in their eyes, right? So one who looks terrible to me will look as gorgeous to someone else. But um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm not talking about the special case. No, I'm that's not talking subjective. about the special case. I'm talking about the objective standards. And the objective standard is that if you expect something from your wife, 
you have to re you have to make sure that she expects the same from you. She, if you expect her, I, to I don't, I don't agree with respect, that. I don't agree with that. If if I expect something from my wife, she can't expect the same thing from me. She can't. Because I'm a totally different expect. individual, and I'm a type, I'm a different no, type of species. you are equal to your wife. That, you are equal to no, your wife. No, absolutely roles, not. Are, no, we walk side by women? side, but we're not equal. Yes. Oh, a hundred. Okay. The Bible says right, honor well, the can... woman as the weaker vessel. Well, Bible we, also we, says we if she Islam, helps you. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on. In Islam, in Islam, and this is the contrast between my religion and your religion. In Islam, paradise is under the feet of the mother. Paradise is attained for the man who fathers a single righteous daughter. Right? The woman's status in Islam is far beyond anything you could imagine. And when we talk about the roles of a woman in Islam, yes, she would have different roles. Yes, she would have to be led by the husband. But this is not because she is lesser than him. Don't get this mistaken. This is not because she's lesser than him. It's because it's in her nature to be someone who wants someone to lead her. And it's in our nature to be people who would lead. Right? And if a woman does not find a leader, she can absolutely leave him. Okay? And, she can, and this is why you would have problems. Where sometimes men would complain about being the carpets. Being but a, all but over. a woman right? should determine if that man is a leader before she marries him. They should get to know uh, one agreed, another, agreed, and she agreed, should determine day, that if this is going to be a good relationship well, I for agree her. With you. I agree and with if you. she marries this man, she should not leave him, and he should not leave her. <laughs> this but they should right, work this things is according, out. This is according to the way they can. This is according to right, according to the Bible. I'm not talking about the according to the Bible. I'm, talking about, I'm not even talking about Islam because when I, what I've been saying here is though yes, this is present in Islam. It's it is in the reality, <laughs> the world we live in. Whereas in the Bible, if a woman, if a man and a woman get married, not divorced, except for the sin of adultery, and then if they get, if either of them get married off, no, the sin of fornication, not the sin of adultery, the sin of fornication, which is totally you different cannot, from the adultery. You can't. Right, okay, okay. I'll tell you why this is. I'll tell you why I say fornication. That. When a woman got married to a man back in the days, they had to. The family Hold had on. to present oh, man. tokens of her virginity. If she had yeah, been, already had sex or fornication with someone else. That's when a man can find out and say, okay, you had a relationship with someone before I married you and I didn't know you. He can divorce her. But he cannot divorce that woman on the sin of adultery. The thing, right? It is uh, what they call it for adultery. Show me in the Bible. The Bible hold on, tell you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, I'm actually trying to explain what the reality is. And you, uh, I'm saying, and, uh, I'm telling you now, there is no woman here right, that will tell you I will agree with you with your interpretation of the Bible, right? Or if you say this is what the text says, or what the Bible itself says, where uh, what do you call it? A woman doesn't have the right to tell, to expect things from her husband, right? No woman here would agree to this. Oh, right? I, and I, I didn't say the that. thing is, I'm a, I'm a guy speaking on behalf of the women. Here. I didn't now, say that. Woman I say a woman, a woman can a woman can expect things from her husband. It, a woman can expect for a husband to actually hold down a job, take care of the things that need to be by taken obligation. care of, do the I'm hard work in the yard. By obligation, which means he no, by doesn't nature. do it. It's just strictly by nature. Now, if a man doesn't do it because he's on drugs or he's caught up into adultery and messing around with another woman or something like that, there, then that woman needs to actually... She can't me? leave him, though. She can't leave him. So if well, he gets, no, if he I, know, no, she, she can't leave him. She can't separate. Him. There's no salvation. She can separate. Oh, he can't separation. separation. She can't have another relationship. She cannot have. <laughs> if she's separated from him, she lives somewhere Did else. She commits enough. adultery. She's still married. If she commits adultery because she's married to that guy, that guy. If she goes out and have another relationship with another man, she's committing adultery. But if she has a relationship with a man before she gets married, it's See, called fornication. Right. Two different well, things. in Islam, look, I know, I know, I know the difference between the two. In Islam, in Islam. If a woman no longer can be with another man, because re you have to remember something, right? Marriage isn't just based off responsibility, it's based off attraction. This is why when you look at people who are in, in marriages and when they look at people who haven't yet been married or young, you know, young couples, we would say to them, spice up your marriage every now and then, right? Refresh it. I, I, you know? I think yeah, marriage that, is hold, based hold, 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 off of hold, hold, love, hold, hold, not attraction. It's based love, off of love, love for attraction one another. Attraction is part of love. Where you actually get along with the individual, you have something in common, attraction and you can agree man. to certain things that are, okay. that are similar to each other, not on attraction. 
Marriage is a package. No love. Is there is package, no love. Right? Marriage is a package. Affection is part of that love, right? If you love someone, you would show them affection, right? It's an action of love, right? You would show them affection, right? You would love is an illusion. Nice words. But here, uh, nice words, right? From them, you would, yeah. you would, you know, you do nice things for them. This is all showing affection. Getting along with someone is not about just rights and responsibilities. It shows. This builds a bond and a trust. If I can trust you to fulfill your obligations towards me, I will give you, I will fulfill my obligations towards you. If you give me my rights, I will give you your rights, right? It's a mutual, because marriage is a contract between two people that they would love and care for one another and they would be together, right? Now the roles of the, of the, the, the two, what they offer each other will be different because of their gender, right? And their capabilities, right? So you, it would never be a marriage contract where a woman would have to build a house with her bare hands. Now, she, a woman can actually dictate this from a, from a man because he's stronger, right? She can, she can say to him, well, if we get married, I, I want you to build me a house. You know, like, your hands. Because, no problem, right? I mean, obviously, if it's reasonable, right? You can find a plot of land. <laughs> I don't think that's house. reasonable. Yourself? I think that we can build a house together is more reasonable. Uh, we can I mean, build a house what, together. What, no, no, no. I'm talking about... Now I'm, talk, I'm talking about... Uh, it is an Islam. In Islam, a woman can put condition on the marriage that so I will marry you if X works. And Protection. Yeah. Wow. She can she can have these things. She can she has a voice. In Islam. So then yeah. you're telling me that if she if she marries a woman, if the woman marries a man, and she mm -hmm. demands these rights, you know, if she demands these things that the man. No, no, no. She doesn't do have to demand. No, no. So, 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 so. You say that sorry, she can, but you said. She, no, she doesn't have to demand these rights. There are certain rights that she doesn't even have to say anything about. They're already hers by default. Right? Okay, so, huh? but her, and, and which is like, build me a house? No, Action. this is something else. She oh, the has a roof over her head. So, she, like, for example, if, if, a woman, if, I, if when I get married, right? my wife, uh, my fiance said to me that she wants, she wants uh, to live separately. She doesn't want to live with the, uh, with the in-laws, right? And I said, no problem. This is a condition. She wants to do that. No problem. Right? For her, her right is that she has a roof over her. Right? Whether it's in her in-laws or her own, or her parents' house, doesn't matter. It's still a roof over her head. But, because she wants something specific, she can say that to me. Now, I can agree to it or disagree, right? And it could be one of those, you know, technically, you know, as we say, deal breakers. Now, if something is a deal breaker, then obviously you don't agree with it. You part ways to find a, a, another partner. Yeah, but obviously, these will be uh, things that are based on uh, mutual agreement. I mean, she can dictate it to you and say, this is exactly what I want and this is a deal breaker for me. And then you can choose to agree or, or, or disagree with it based on how reasonable you are, your capabilities, you know, what she's doing. Her demand is reasonable. So, for example, if she says to me, look, I'll marry you if you give me a million pounds as a wedding and I, I, I can only afford, I only have 50k in my account, and I say, this is not reasonable, get out of it. Right? You want a millionaire? Go find a millionaire. You want a million pounds for a wedding gift? Go, go find, you know, marry Jeff. Right? Get away from it. No problem. Right? But that's why I like the Bible the... saying that if a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Not if the wife finds a husband, but if a man no, finds never, a wife, what, he finds a good thing. Anything. I never said anything about a woman. I know, but what you're saying, by the way, in you're Islam. saying that if oh, she demands Islam, a million, million pounds from you and you say you only have 50K, so you have to part and go your own way. I yeah. like this getting to know an individual and getting to understand if y'all have anything in common and if y'all can survive no, together I'm in saying, a I'm holy saying, matrimony. Well, I'm not, what I'm explaining, you're missing the point. What I'm saying to you is that bond can be made from a, from a, a woman right, with regards to marriage if it's reasonable, right? Now, obviously, most women will make reasonable demands, right? Because they want a certain thing from their marriage, right? Which is fine. No problem, right? Because it's reasonable. But there are some women... Right? That that come unreasonable, and there are men that are unreasonable. I don't know, it's a one-way thing. There are men that are unreasonable. <laughs> Say, well, look, I like you and everything, but I'll only marry you if you, you know, dress up in a certain way every single day. Well, a woman doesn't want to get married. When will married when will that conversation take place? When should that conversation take place in a relationship? Should it take so place on your Islam. first date when you go out and take her no, to no, eat no. and so she'll tell Islam, you this or? 
In Islam, this is the thing when it comes to the process of marriage, okay? In Islam, there is no such thing as a girlfriend or boyfriend. So we don't go on dates where it's just me and, me and her. Why is this? It's because a woman has her dignity, right? If I'm going to go out with her I'm gonna, and I'm going to try and you know, lull her, seduce her and her affair, and have a, have a night with her, I'm giving her no rights or nothing. And I am defiling the daughter of another man. Now, if so, and now we know that this is the case. When we know, when despite we us living in a sexualized uh, society, yeah, where where porn and uh, what do you call it, OnlyFans and uh, this stuff is in promoted, we know for a fact that sleeping with another girl who's you know is, is uh, defiling her. Because this is why men, right, if someone slept with your daughter, you'd you'd find them and kill him. If not kill him, you'd put him in the hospital. And that's, and that's called fornication. I, I, I'm saying even from a secular perspective, right? Even from a secular perspective where sexuality is being pushed, right? Still don't accept it. Which is why you have secular fathers going, going absolutely mad when they realize that uh, their daughter has slept with someone, right? They want to go and find that guy. But when it's their son going sleeping around with another daughter, they're like, what's that saying? Give her one from me? As, as they say, you know, like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, it's absolutely Yeah, you know, disgusting. but the thing about that, too, and I'm not trying to get off the subject, no, no, though, no. is why should you oh, chase no, no. down a guy when he didn't rape her? If he raped her, it would be one thing, and I would go after oh. him. But if she consents, the principle, consented, look, a daughter, and she's look, of a age. Daughter, a daughter is precious. Understand this. A woman is precious, right? Now, people say to Muslims, why do we, why do we tell our women to cover up? Right. And we give this analogy. What do you do with a diamond? What do you do with a gem? What do you do with something that's valuable? You cover it protect up. Protect it. Don't yeah. protect it. And I agree. So it's not it's not ask your women to dress modestly. Because it's just how they no, no. should dress. It's modestly. No, 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 no. You don't tell women. Look, Allah tells the women how to dress. And he tells them to, how to dress out of, uh, out of uh, what do you call it, his wisdom. Yeah? Because, you see, women are a uh, thing. And we are told to cover up. A man is meant to cover up as well. So this is why I say to you that in Islam, men and women are equal. People think that we only tell the women to cover up. No. A man has to cover up. Right? And before, in the Quran, Allah said to the women, before Allah said to women to cover up, he told the men to lower your gaze. Stop looking at the women. They're not yours. The pervert. No, yours. You haven't given them any rights. got a lot to answer can, for. Yeah. Can I add, add something to that? No, no. no. Corinthians no. 1, 11, 5 to 10. It's also said that women should cover their head. They do that, they should shave their head bald. Yeah, and but the, the thing Bible is, here's, says, here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the Bible, it doesn't give you the, the, the wisdom Because if they don't it. cover their head, no, they yeah, yeah, yeah. Their I agree. Islam explains to the woman. I, and explain to the man why you should like for a man we have to cover up from a waist down right so our kneecaps why is that it's because we only have one private part right which is well two actually that sucks as well we have to cover that section right it has to be loose we can't wear tight you know just because we're wearing just because we're covering that section it means we can wear tight joggings where our bulges are showing right no you know this is this is this is not correct it has to be loose and likewise, we don't tell like people today. We say they see Muslim women with the you know the burqa, right? The black thing. Isn't that just this bad is, behavior? This... Right. So you know, just again, just decent look at look at the tribes people in the jungle. They're not wearing any clothes, and they're perfectly happy. Oh, we're talking about modesty, right? Right now, the people you don't, don't need don't to be modest that. if you've got nothing to be ashamed of. I see. Whoa, whoa, whoa! People, okay. Let me, let me put, put this to you. Some people are not ashamed of murdering. Well, they, He's got nothing to be ashamed of. They're twisted by society, aren't they? They're, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. But it's got absolute, I'm talking about feel people that don't come... Out. No, no, no. See, but this is... You're missing the principles. Right? The principles people are, like raping. With, people like doing so. People like doing certain no, things. You have nudists. You have people like that like what? to be nudists. Right? You have nudists, right? People like Quran naked. But what does that invite? It invites rape. No, no, it doesn't invite rape. 
There is only a, only in a society in which is which has this, which has made people no, no, feel no. ashamed. Look at the secular. Be naked. Look at the secular society. Look at the secular society and the and the surveys that have been done with regards to uh, what type of woman is being raped, right? And you would see that the type of woman that is being raped is usually the one that has something revealing, and not necessarily just walking around with a bra. Antis, yeah, but just you're something that's talking real, about real. twisted user individuals who've been contorted by society to to create right. that. No, no, no. It's actually not by society. If you actually look at these rape cases, it is by society. society. We all learn behavior. To, it's not society. We're born with rape. Bottom line it's it's not society. Evil force is an evil force that's identified yeah, but as when you, Lucifer when you speak to a or the devil that actually talks to a man's mind and say, "Wow, look oh, at her." Oh, man. And then oh, he has this thought coming to his heart that he wants to be with her, and he takes advantage of her through rape. My oh, man, that's all yeah, based no, 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 on. No, no. You're you're saying secular. You and I, you're using commercial and all that. It all boils down to it's the devil. It's good versus evil. You and I, you want to believe that for us, that the that the devil has something to do with it, right? When you're talking to someone who doesn't believe in God, I uh, would call it uh, a, a secular lifestyle. You have to speak to them on their paradigm. Because if you're not speaking to them on their paradigm, uh, who cares about I don't know about anything devil, about right? somebody's paradigm that doesn't believe in right, God so I, well, I don't I, know anything I, about I, it. Really? Atheist? Well, I've studied uh, I've studied I, I'm their not believe, I'm not an atheist. I, I don't know. Well, I don't understand that. You, you don't need to be an atheist to study about them. Right? They study human beings as well, right? It's good to know about them. Right? It's good to have knowledge about people. Right? Because if you, want to, if, you, if you as a Christian want people to become Christian, and you don't, know, and you don't care about learning what they believe, any of these people no, here. No, it, it's not you that. It's not that. It's just that you don't care I do them. not know how you to... You don't care enough uh, to know about them. Hold on. There's only one thing that I can tell them that will help them, and that's Acts 2.38. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive but they're the not power gonna listen to you. and the gift of the Holy Ghost. They're not going okay, to listen to that. Exactly. They're not right. going to listen to you. Listen listen to that. Probably so what are you doing? Stuff. So, so, you, so people, you listen to what they do have to say, and then you learn. People appear appeal to reason, which is why when I when I quote when I quote the Quran, I explain the reason for why these verses exist, why these legislations exist, right? Why when we tell women to do certain things, and why we tell men to do certain things, I can demonstrate it in reality. I can explain the wisdom that was provided to us within our scripture, within the explanation of the Prophet peace be upon him. I'm not just going to say, "Allahu Allahu Ahad." There you go. There's the message. Bye bye. Oh, who cares? No one cares. Even a Muslim wouldn't care, even though it's well, his own what scripture, you did, he won't care. But actually, what you did by giving me a demonstration of why, uh, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, women are subjugated under Islam, it just tells me that it's it's something which does need updating, because that's not the way people think anymore. So, well, okay, so uh, here's, 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 this is a good point, right? It's not the way people think anymore. Right? Does that mean that the legislation is wrong? And when you say subjugation, when we say subjugation, we're talking about oppression. We're saying that women have yeah. to do certain things. Right? We're talking about, there is no woman in prison. Yeah. Uh, Islam doesn't oppress women. Right? It elevates oh, women. It, it... No, you maybe said an, for a start that, that, that well, show, show me the you, told me, you told me that it, it's, it's generally the case that men lead the family. Leading, so you, you, you're instantly assuming oppression. that that's the role that the man is going to take in the family. So that's... Okay, that's so leadership, the leadership, no, no, leadership, by definition, is not oppression. Because then we could say, well, Boris Johnson, well, I'm in the UK. I can say, well, Boris Johnson has just uh, oppressed the entire country just for being prime minister. Right? He is. Just, but, uh, that's, I know he is. I know he is. I'm just saying, just, I know he is. I'm just saying just <laughs> for that title. Right? Just for that title. Just for holding the title of prime minister. He's automatically an oppressor. Well, he's oh, upholding the oppression of, of the done. people, yes. It's it's, because uh, it's, that's done. his now, job. Here's, now, here's the thing with Islam, with regards to, even with a, uh, a husband leaving the, the marriage, if a husband oppresses his wife, she can leave him, right? Not only that, she can, uh, she can tell the people so that they can correct him. And why does Islam say that a woman shouldn't try and do it herself? Because but if a man is oppressing... Only, uh, a woman lives... In up in Islam, and all she knows is Islamic people, so she's I living in her own little I Islamic bubble, you. right? And I so she doesn't really I'm understand. She doesn't really understand um, what her options are, are and and what other women are thinking. 
No, no, Colin, they, my, they don't understand your fiance, perception of it. Uh, Colin, my fiance, yes. right, she, she, grew, she grew up in a Pakistani family, right? Like she is Pakistani. And she's been uh, oppressed by her own family, right? She's been told that she has not she has no opinion, and this is what Islam says. And she's been fed all of this stuff, and she's been oppressed, okay? Now, I started teaching her what Islam actually chose, right? And now she's like quite outspoken with me, right? Because now she realizes she has an opinion and she hasn't had an opinion for so long. Now she's quite outspoken. And I love it, right? But she puts me in my place when I'm wrong, okay? It's, the teaching of Islam is one thing. How people can use it is another, right? So we shouldn't judge the religion or the legislation by how people uh, do it. We can say, that, well, you know, Britain is crap because Boris Johnson... Uh, the, the British people are crap because, you know, Boris Johnson leads them. This is not true, right? Yes, Boris Johnson is doing a lot of things that people would think is un-British. So that the people that he's leading, right? Likewise, in Islam, there are many, many Muslims that do things that are not Islamic. They try to justify it using the Quran, yes. I'm not saying that they don't. But when we look at the teaching itself, and we see that what the teaching is, is not what they do, and we realize there is a problem with them, that what they're trying to do is justify their twisted ideas oppression right yeah. to make to you know just to justify it and say well, yeah we can do it no problem right but this is not the case okay and a lot of what i do is against itself it's actually ensuring that we weed out these oppressors right? and islam mentions that oppression is worse than death right but so we understand the gravity of oppression so we are forbidden but as soon as you call yourself an our islamist then you no, set yourself no, apart no, from the Christians. What, what then? Muslim. Muslim. Yeah, the word Muslim. Is Muslim. Well, no, I got to go. Muslim. Muslim. Yeah, whatever. If you are Islam. <laughs> you say you have a fiance. That means yes, you do. guys are dating, right? With a sh no. with a chaperone. The chaperone. So we are allowed to don't, meet don't each other. Don't you see that by calling out, yourself a Muslim, a you are we are dividing yeah. ourselves. We are dividing ourselves against the Christians, against the Hindus, Naturally. against all these Naturally. other people. That, that, and and, and so forget, nah, we can Because, no, because no, no, no. globally, we are being controlled by corporations. Here's the thing, here's the thing Colin, right? Division is not by, necessary, by necessity an evil thing or a bad thing. Right? Because if you do something good and you divide yourself, oh, because you can, if you divide yourself from the murderers and the rapists, you say I'm not one of them. You're 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 making division. I don't believe there would be murderers and rapists if we had. Yeah, but no, no, you should can't. Be no, hold on. You're missing. You the can't principle. divide the yourself principle. from the murderer and the rapist because they're human beings, and human beings, we're still the same. They just no, have no, a no, different. No, no. no. As soon as we invent labels, labels we are human beings. We call each other. But they're just God. sick people. But a murderer and a rapist another sick just person have different been activities been in their lives than we do. Affected so by society differently. From them like that, there is what's going on. There right is a, there is a, there is a. But they're trying to have this, this. I think you guys are missing the point. Because, no, no, I, I yes, got the point. I got all, your point. No, we are all kind of vague, though. No, well, and you haven't really got the point because I'm quite specific no really I'm seriously married. yeah you're saying that women and, should on, actually on. It, what, what is all the way point? back I, about I, maybe I, 15 so minutes ago you said women should division. actually dictate to a man as Look. to what type of life they want to live when they marry him I, I, I don't agree with that and it's, that's, how, agree that's what got us no to where we are now in this conversation uh, to be honest we actually started off with the preservation of the crown but then it into women's rights, and I, I, I thought it was, Sorry. it's actually a good. It's actually a good subject to cover because we do have women among us, um, um, and I know we are men speaking on your behalf. I do apologise, but um, uh, you know, obviously, at any time you you want to chime in, sisters, uh, by all means, you know. But what I'm saying here is, division is by ne not by necessity is not a bad thing, right? Yes, we are all human beings, right? And we all have that commonality, and this is why we should always try and approach each other and learn about each other, right? learn about our different beliefs and stuff, different cultures, different languages, and which we all do, you know, thankfully. But we also have to divide ourselves, because if we divide ourselves uh, from, from right and wrong, and we do not unite with people who do wrong, right? If we say that we should just unite with people, right? Okay, well, let's unite with the right, with the murderer, right? He is a human being. Let's just unite with him. And this is and this is actually something that's creeped into secular thought as well, because this is why things like, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, and this is going to be graphic, 
unfortunately today there are people that are trying to push incest, pedophilia, bestiality, right? All in the name of freedom of expression because we're all human. We all we should all love each other. Yeah, this is this is the banner under which all of these things are being pushed. Right? So for us to divide ourselves and say, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not going to be party to having sex with children or having relations with donkey. Right. This is something for this is something good for us to differentiate, to divide, and actually push for I that agree. division. You know. I agree. And and God actually so divided the people religion up at the Tower that. of Babel and sent everybody all different ways right. with different so, languages and everything. So the division is. Who can teach I agree with principles? You. Right. So with regards to religion, why do we? Why do we just people use religion as a means to divide people, to unite and to divide, to unite the believers? And to divide between uh, between people who do immorality, immorality and, and all of these things, right? Why do, you do we use politics, religion? Dividing it's people? because no, it's because we have a moral anchor. We have something, right, where whereby it will not shift based on the whims and desires of men, right? So when we right. say That's that true, we are going to do something, when we when we say that we are going to do something because the one who has legislated for us knows the best about humanity because he's the creator of it. If you created a phone, right, or a laptop, you would know the best about it because you are the creator. You know the ins and outs right. of it. You know what's best for right. it, what the best software is, what the best hardware is, what, what the best update for it is. Likewise for us, God is our creator. Thereby, he would know what is best for us what's worse for us and he will legislate accordingly he will give us but the that thing is manual. you don't know that the only people that are dictating it to you are your parents or the people that are raising you and they are bringing Absolutely you up not. in a certain way uh, you were begin, not born a muslim you, you were bo born a christian you were no. indoctrinated I, in a certain I, lifestyle for, 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 for a muslim we say that every person is born muslim right? even if you end up being uh, bo uh, raised as a christian or anything you say you're born Muslim because the word Muslim. Pure indoctrination and propaganda. No, 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 no. no. I mean, how, how do you justify, right. how do you justify that everyone is born Muslim? How do you justify that? Because the word Doesn't Muslim. Doesn't for the people converting to Islam. From from. Right, that's the first thing, right? But the the principle, the foundations of this principle is: what does the word Muslim mean? Right? Muslim is a verb. Is one who submits to his creator. Right? Now, when a baby is born, it submits to its creator because it's. It's fresh. It's not influenced by anyone, right? But it submits to its creator via its instinct, right? So it has certain qualities about it. So a baby has certain qualities about it, which are inherent with all babies. You wouldn't see a difference between all babies. They're all exactly the same. It's only mm -hmm. after they grow up with the influence of their parents, right? Mm -hmm. And the nurture, the society, that's when they start developing other ideas, other beliefs, based on what people have taught them. But then you would have people who attain a certain age where they would start thinking about what they've been told, they've been taught, they've heard, and they would think about it for themselves. Right? So I agree with you, there is a level of conditioning. Right? There is a, a level of being, uh, what do you call it, uh, raised on something. Right? But this isn't just for religious people. This is for an atheist. An atheist will raise his... Okay. As much as I love the Quran, what do you call it now? Not the time, yeah, as, um, yes, sir. So, so this is not the case for just religious people. Even for the atheists, if you have an atheist having a baby, they would raise them to say, to teach them, ah, forget religion. There is no God. Everything is a natural ex has a natural explanation. These are things that were taught into a child growing up as an atheist. It doesn't have to be religious. And then the question is for each and every one of us is now that we are all. Now that we all have our own intellect, now that we have experienced the world and learned and attained knowledge and wisdom, isn't it time that we use our own minds? Isn't it time that we hold ourselves accountable for our own beliefs? That we are able to explain to ourselves before other people why we believe what we believe? So basically no, what you're what saying we, is that we should all become gods within ourselves? No. What? Saying if you hold a belief, you need to be able to explain why you hold that belief. And not only be able to explain it, know that it, it cannot be falsified in order for it to be true. This is where the concept of the absolute truth comes in. 
right? Because the absolute truth will only come when you when it cannot be falsified, right? Like we have the absolute truth of two plus two equals four. We cannot falsify that. And, right? and what is so the absolute, absolute truth? truth? And where do you find the absolute truth in your opinion? I can explain to you why Islam is the absolute truth. I gave an example earlier with the preservation of the Quran. This is empirical evidence, right? For any person to investigate and show that there is a certain promise within the Quran which has been made a claim and you can test the in the influences that would affect preservation and you would see that none of it has, has touched the, the Okay, tradition. so I have a question for you. The Muslims sure. that believe that if you bomb the world tower, you die, you will wake up with, what, is it seven or ten virgins in 72. paradise? Is that in the Quran or is that something no. that was just developed no, outside of the Quran? This is something they've made up. You do understand that there are people that believe that. <laughs> I agree with you. I look, okay. I'm not, I'm so not now, saying that if there I are believe, terrorists. So now what you're saying is now, if I believe that if I abide by the Holy Bible written by King James and I live my life according to that those scriptures and I'm not living the truth because I'm not living according to the Quran or is the Quran is the Quran so, oh, you're saying that I'm not living the truth because I'm not living by the Quran I'm living by something that was made up now I'm not just saying yes for the sake of saying yes because I want Islam to be true. No, it's because I can evidence it. Can I prove that the Bible is something that cannot be trusted? Yes, I can prove it. I can prove it empirically. And I'm using I mean, the same I, standard. I would like to I, see you. I would like to see you try yeah. to prove that because I'm talking yeah, no about the Holy would Bible. You use, as you as you mentioned, as you mentioned, I'll, I'll do it right now. As you mentioned, <laughs> the King's. You read the King's James, right? Now the King James, right? <laughs> manuscripts that have been used for the King's James right, are from the 16th century, 15th, 16th century. Now the fifteenth and sixteenth century, based on the writings, the scrolls and the writings that they were that were found. Right, except right. the writings and the scrolls that were found, which right. include the Codex Sinaiticus or Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandria, right, in the three most popular, uh, you know, the three four uh, codices of the early Christian text, do not marry up. They don't marry up. Right? And okay, I have, and so, I so you're saying that there's some things in the Holy Bible. <laughs> That don't jive with one another. I mean, they don't match up. Because I like to, you know, I like for only, you to show me one not, contradicting not only, scripture in itself for not only, thou okay, shalt not, not only, kill. All right, that so you, not have, you have already. Right, that's let, not what me, God said. He said thou shalt not murder. Okay. Okay. No. No. All right. I'll, I'll show you within the New Testament. Okay. If you go to First John, five seven, which is in the in uh, the King James uh, version. Now you go to that to now try and find that in Codex. Uh, um, Sinaiticus. First John five seven does not exist in Codex Sinaiticus. John chapter eight, uh, John chapter seven, verse fifty seven to John chapter eight, verse eleven does not appear in Codex Sinaiticus. Can Mark, you tell me? Chapter sixteen. Can you give me an idea what those scriptures say? Because I'm not that familiar with, and okay. I can't. So the first John five there, seven is the Trinitarian. Uh, it's the Trinitarian formula, right? Uh, there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. This is First John. Chapter, uh, yeah, first, uh, first John chapter five verses seven and eight, right? These, this scripture in the Greek manuscript, according to your earliest New Testament manuscript, do not exist at all. Doesn't it? There's nothing there. Okay, but <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. So you're saying that the Trinity is not, is, it doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Because when God, when He said, "Let us create man," he, who He was, who was He talking to? God said, "Let us create man in our own image." Angels. He was talking to the angels. He was talking to the angels, but he was referring to him. But the angels are of subjection to God. They have no I right. They have no will. So how can he be talking I'm, to them? You, no, no. You, you asked me who is he talking to, and he's talking to the angels. But the word "us" is referring to himself alone in the royal we. Now, how do I know this? Is because of the Semitic languages. The Semitic languages have always been known to uh, to use royal plural, right? The royal we. Now the royal we is present in Hebrew. It's present in, in Arabic. It's actually present in the Quran because Allah refers to Himself as Nahnu, right? We, in the Quran, right? and it's a Semitic uh, uh, device. Uh, the royal we is being used. So this is from a linguistic aspect. So in Genesis 1:26, where He says, uh, "Let 
us, make man in our image, is referring to talking to the angels. The us is the 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 use of this uh, some uh, this uh, you know device, linguistic device of the royal plural, right? Even and this is why Elohim sign. is in the plural, right? This is why Elohim is in the plural, right? I don't see this how is why God when... can talk to what He created and ask them to create something when they were he's created. He's create. the creator. He's not asking. No, he said, create. "Let us." Okay, He's demanding it. Let us. He made a command. Let us. No, no, no. And then when okay. Jesus let came, us. He said, "I have been here from let the us. beginning. I was here from the beginning." No, no, hold on, hold on. Let us wait. Hold on. First of all, <laughs> let us. The word "us" is referring to Himself. He, he essentially He's saying, "I will create." Right? But He's speaking to the angels. Okay. What about right? our? But. Our Let us same create thing. man our image. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. It's the same device. Oh, same semantic oh, device. Oh, you can check you it out. Can you can check that. out the royal plural will. in Hebrew. I will study that one. Yeah, check out the royal Hebrew. The, you can even you can even look at the rabbinical commentaries, <laughs> right? Where Ibn Ezra, who is uh, one of the best rabbinical commentators right, of the Old Testament, he mentions it very clearly, right? The royal plural has been uh, managed. You can you can check this out. The great thing about the Jewish um, uh, commentary is that it's available online. You can go to Faria, Faria dot com, right? And you can uh, look up uh, Ibn Ezra's commentary on uh, Genesis one twenty six, and it makes it very clear that it's the royal, the majesty, plural, is what he refers to it as. I've read this commentary myself. Have used it in uh, my. Uh, when in, in engaging, it's on my YouTube okay. channel. The evidence. I've actually gone through the entire <laughs> Trinity. I've gone through the Trinity in the entirety in the Old Testament, and it's on my YouTube channel. It's five and a half hours of content, right, obviously divided into eleven parts. Okay, and but you, you mentioned earlier. You mentioned some scriptures uh, earlier in the New Testament that doesn't jive and everything. However, yeah. what about the other scriptures? Do the other scriptures jive with with oh, the Old Testament? Yeah. Do they live? You no, know, as so a even testament the testament to the Old Testament. Okay, I will, I will get, I will come back to you. Forgive me. Um, uh, so listen, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm just really interested in. I'm, if someone else has a question, but, so no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Well, actually, my question was related to this topic. Um, I just wanted to know: um, uh, Is there anywhere in the Bible uh, does the does Jesus Christ say, um, "Wash me," or "Am I, I am God"? No, this is a this is a Zaka, this is a like polemic and it's valid right? uh, but we need to um, understand that um, though it works the way the way polemics uh, are these days it's not as effective but yes there is nowhere in the in the gospel where in the in the New yeah. Testament where God he said, where Jesus said him, I am God, God or say, worship I and my father are one and the same and, and he said and he, in so order he, to get to the we have to deal with these so we have to deal with yeah. And we need to understand, so, understand with regards as, as as amazing as Zakir Naik is, right? With his dawah, right? You have to understand that these uh, uh, arguments are from, you know, the the late 90s, 80s as well, right? Um, in, in the early 2000s, yeah. That's 2021. Christians have brought, you know, other scriptures that they will cite, say that this is how Jesus is claiming divinity, how he's saying he's God. He's saying he's worship, you know, to worship him, but it's not expected, right? Well, thank and they you. try to flip this on us. Okay, well, show us where and they will say this to the Muslims. They will say, "Oh, show us in the Quran where it says Tawheed." Keep talking about Tawheed. Show us in the Quran where it says Tawheed, and we can't, right? Because the word Tawheed doesn't appear in the Quran. Will it be like, well, so but we still believe in Tawheed? So... No, it doesn't say Tawheed. Where does it say Tawheed? It doesn't say Tawheed. The concept <laughs> is there. Had. No, had. but that, no, no. Oh, the word, the word Tawheed. When we say to oh. them. Show oh, us okay, where it okay. says, you know, the verbatim, I am God and worship me. They'll say the same thing to us. Oh, you have the concept in the Quran of Tawheed, but you don't have the word Tawheed. Likewise for us, we have the concept of uh, Jesus being God and being worshipped, but it's not very explicit. Thank you. Thank you. All right? So we need to, like, um, get with the times, essentially. Um, but we do understand that there's no way to the Father but through... Jesus Christ. I agree you with you. You cannot get through you. God. And he did say that I and my father are one and the same. And he I did agree. say no, he didn't say the same. He, was he, here. he didn't say the same. He didn't say he didn't the say same? same. No, no. Says, I and the father are one. Father are one. We, we know the scripture. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. How we did know you the finish scripture. it? I might, yeah, I might have to check that one. one. I'll check that one. John, you can check it out. John chapter 10, verse 30. I'll cite you. 
Right? He is, he oh, the here's the interesting thing. In John chapter 17, verse yeah. 21, it says the same thing to the disciples. It says, like, I and the Father are one. And he makes a prayer, right? He says, like, I and the Father are one. May you be one with us. Same, yeah. same language is being used, right? Yeah. So you can check that out as well. We have, uh, when you speak to Muslims, alhamdulillah, and I hope you realize this, we don't just care about our scripture. We care about your scripture. Because we want to understand why you believe what you believe. And we have to think about the scripture as well. Do you have a point or do you not have a point? Because if I say to you Christianity is wrong, because Islam is true, that's not going to convince you. Right? I, can, I have to demonstrate it. This is why we study your scripture. Right? So I invite you to study our scripture. You need to know why we believe what we believe. Right? If you read the Quran and you study the Quran, you will learn a lot about them. And you might come to realize, hmm, maybe, maybe they've got a point. But and I actually, just I actually have the Quran. I have the book. Alhamdulillah. The, 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 Alhamdulillah. I have it. Oh, I, I just have. haven't had a chance to really get in there. I started reading it. It looks very interesting. Um, I, I, I ran into a roadblock. It's gone. That's fine. You're just you know, inshallah tonight. Inshallah tonight. We're not saying just do a page, page every day. Right? It's not much, right? Page a day will you know in the English language. Okay. Well, maybe. Which, which surah should he start with? No, right, look, when we invite to it, we shouldn't say to them, like, just start with any particular surah. Read the whole thing. If you want to know what Islam is, read the whole thing. It's only 600 okay, pages. Yeah. Read from no, the only start. 600... Right. Read from the start. It's only 600 pages. I'm pretty sure most of us have read books that are larger than that. And especially yeah. if you're a Harry Potter fan and you read the freaking seventh book. You know, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> It was a great book. Though. Not, not a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I'm <just kidding. laughs> Star, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, Star Wars is as well. I never um, watched Star Wars either. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh you even God. human? What have you done with <laughs> your life? I, I know, I know. Ah. I, I, <laughs> oh, wow! No, it's just those those things I've never watched. But it's because I didn't take an interest in it because it just it's not real. It's not reality, you know. Uh, um, and enough. I don't watch reality TV shows either. I keep up with the daily news around the world, around the country, you know, here in the United States, you know, and things of that sort. Oh, but I don't watch a lot of fiction and scientific, you know, sci-fi and things of that sort. It's yeah. well, kind of weird to me. Well, that's fine. It's no problem. Don't worry. We won't gang up on it. So, um, don't, don't judge yeah, me, what y'all. With... <laughs> no, no, no. Don't worry. So with regards to the manuscript, right, the, the proof that the Bible is unreliable, right? It, I've given you examples from the from the uh, textual aspect, right? Uh, I've cited some verses, right, some passages, which you will not find in the Codex Sinaiticus. You can check the Codex Sinaiticus on the Britannica website. Right? No, sorry, the British uh, Museum website. They actually have uh, the, uh, the, the entirety of the Codex Sinaiticus. They actually it's digitally available, and you can click on the verses, so you can find John, filter it out first, find First John 5, you will see it's not there. First John 5, 7, 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 7 to 8, it's not there. It does not say, uh, you know, there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these are one. You know, it does not say this. This is essentially one of the core things that you believe, yet it's not present in the earliest manuscript that you have. So check it out. Another aspect is a historical, the historical problems. Luke mentions in, in his gospel that he's trying to be very accurate with his uh, with his gospel, right? He's, he's taken from many witnesses. He mentions he's taken from many witnesses, and he's trying to give the best account, the most accurate account. So we can tell that, uh, as according to what is there, that Luke is trying to be as genuine with his telling of the gospel. Right? He was a yes. physician. Yeah, he was a physician, right? So, according to what we know about him, um, okay. so well, I do have a question for you. I don't want to. I know a lot of interrupting your thought here, but what do you think about the Book of Revelations? Do you see so the, the book of, prophecy of the Book, book of, of Revelations Re happening now throughout this entire uh, planet? Well, the thing is, it's the thing is the Book of Revelations. First of all, it's not the Book of Revelations. It's the Book of Revelation. Right, it it's, was revealed. It's not, it's not revealing. A, it's, it was one revelation. Right? 
that was revealed. Okay. <laughs> with regards to the prophecy. But that's why he, Jesus said, "I am my Father are one." Say the same, but I am my Father are one. So one no, 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 book actually, of Revelation is all we need is basically what's happening now well, actually, on this planet: famine and wars and fires and tornadoes and earthquakes and things of that sort. Yeah, but the thing is, here's here's the thing, right? In Revelation, right, it refers to it doesn't refer to Jesus as being God. That's the Father as being God. Right? That's the first one. Now you can quote to me Revelation chapter one verse eight and Revelation chapter one verse eighteen where it talks about the Alpha and the Omega, but if you actually right. go into the hermeneutics if you go into the hermeneutics of the passages, you would realise that actually Jesus is referring to the Father. That the Father is the Alpha and the Omega. Right? Not him. Right? But so check did out the hermeneutics. Identify himself as the Alpha and no. Omega. No. He refers to the Father, and this is evident, especially with chapter with verse look, 18 I'm have to of look Revelation that up, man. 1. Yeah, check out Revelation 1 18 in particular because it's more clear. Revelation 1 8, you have to go back to Revelation 1 4 through to 8 in order to understand what's happening because you have John speaking, you have angels speaking, and you have Jesus speaking. Right? But Jesus is referring to the Father. Um, and but Revelation 1 18 is very clear because Jesus makes it, makes it very clear. The father is the Alpha and the Omega. Well, it's, it's, more, it's a lot clearer in that regard. Okay. Gee, and the thing is, with regards to the prophecies as well, right? You have a lot of things like talking about the, the you know, the dragons, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the beast, the number of the beast. You have all of these things that sound uh, on a superficial level that come from fantasy, right? That's the very thing that you hate. Obviously, I'm not saying that that's the case because we understand that this is, you know, we're not expecting dragons to come back. But we understand that the language is very allegorical, right? which is the nature of uh, how Jesus would speak to his disciples, very allegory, parable. So we understand we're not talking about Lord of the Rings coming back, you know, with their dragons and stuff. So, um, so we understand that it's allegory. So there's a lot to detach from. Right? So with regards to prophecy within... Revelation, first of all, it's about the apocalypse. This is why it's otherwise known about uh, apocalypse of John. So can we talk about it as a, something that we can evidence today? No, because we haven't yet reached the apocalypse. Uh, the prophecies in of themselves are very vague, right? Now, in Islam, we have criteria for prophecy, right? Now, in order for prophecy to be fulfilled, it has to be specific. It has to be specific, because otherwise you can claim anything is prophecy. Right, so, and this is what astrologists do. You know, the people who, uh, you know, did this whole thing with, you know, Cancer, Libra, what do they call it? Capricorn, and all this stuff, right? And they, these things in the newspapers, they tell you what's going to happen with you. It's very vague. Oh, you were born in February. That means you're going to be cheerful. Oh, okay. And then you, and then, and then you realize, cheerful. Oh, this must be true. Oh, hold on a second. Do you not think about people that are born in October and also cheerful? It's very vague, right? So you can't talk about it as prophecy as something a matter of fact. So this is why we can't really trust what Revelation says, because it's very vague. Now, there might be things in it that do come true. It's not about if one or two things come true. This is another criteria of prophecy. It's that everything has to be come true about it. Otherwise, it ceases to be prophecy. It ceases to be revelation, because if it's false, it's not revelation. It hasn't come from God, right? So you can't just say, well, what about this yeah, thing? Come, yeah. So th then in this country, okay, yeah, fine, that country. true. The Old Testament said that, what do you call it? Um, the Messiah will come. Okay, great, that's true. The Messiah did come, yeah, Jesus. Okay, according to our beliefs. The Old Testament also prophesies that the Messiah would wage war and, be, and re uh, reestablish the Davidic kingdom. I think it happened with Jesus. Uh, uh oh, we've got a problem now. Okay, so what were they saying he was going to wage war while he was here? Okay, and you don't think that he actually did in a spiritual way uh, to where? <laughs> oh no, this is like... not what the Old Testament says. This is not what the Old Testament says. It's not what the New Testament says. The New Testament makes it very clear in Luke chapter 19, verse 27, when uh, Jesus speaks about his second coming. Uh, when he comes, he, will, he says to his uh, people, bring everyone who did not take me, you know, uh, set me as their king and slaughter them in front of me. Right? So this is not a spiritual fighting. This is actual 
going to slaughter him because you haven't, you haven't believed in me. This is what Jesus testifies to as he will do in his second coming, as judgment. Where, where was that? Right? Uh, and this is how the Christians interpret it, as judgment because, you know, and he will just kill them because they're disbelievers. Right? And this is what oh, the um, no, Old Testament says. What the Jews say no. this is a failed prophecy because Jesus, has, we cannot test this prophecy to say it's true. It happened yet. Right? Now, you and I believe that he has a second coming. The Jews don't. The Jews believe that uh, the Messiah only comes once. He doesn't come twice. Because right? they don't have anywhere in, anywhere in the Old Testament. It doesn't say anything about the Messiah coming twice. It doesn't say that. It just says the Messiah will come. Because so they, because they solely kind of live exact. off the Old Testament, is that correct? Yeah, of course they, yeah, they do. But which was written by the Hebrews. When you ask, if you, yeah, but if you, if you ask, a, if you ask, um, yeah, well, and the New Testament was written by the Greeks. Right? Um, so, but if you ask a Jew today, why they don't believe that Jesus is inside? Well, the people of the Old Testament, they say, well, if he did, and they, if you ask them, they'll say, if he did what the Old Testament said he would do. We would accept him as a Messiah. But because the New Testament doesn't show us that he did what the Old Testament said he would do, we don't believe in him. He has to be the false Messiah because he's not fulfilling Old, Test Old Testament prophecy. Okay, like I said, so maybe he did do these Jesus things that it was, maybe he did do these things and we just have missed it. Or there's something that we have oh, you, you think we uh, not think we would have missed Jesus? You think we would have Well, okay, hold on now because the scriptures are. are the scriptures have been written to uh, to to help man to uh, to identify themselves with Jesus Christ as his, their, your brother and as your gateway into paradise, to live forever in eternal state of mind with well in the eternal with with God. Now, those things are some hit. Some things are hidden. It's just like the 400 years that happened between uh, the last book of the Old Testament, which I can't remember what it was. There was a like a, like a last, okay, 400 years took place before John, uh, before the, the before John the Baptist, Baptist. kind of came on the scene. So what happened in those 400 years? This is like a veil there. Some things the hidden. The Bible talk about the hidden mysteries. It's mentioned about the hidden mysteries, and the Bible said, "Great is the mystery of God." He was manifest in the flesh. He was seen of angels. He dwelt among us, and he was received up into glory. Who was that? That was Jesus Christ, the, the is, Messiah. He was manifest in the is, flesh. The thing is, here's the thing, right? The Messiah nowhere in the Old Testament is referred to as God. So if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and is God, you, you cannot have both because there is no prophecy well, in the Well, because Old the Old Testament identified them as being us. No, no, Mel the who was Melchizedek? Um, uh, the, Melchizedek. Who was that guy? Yeah. He's a mystery figure. He okay, should be God. According to the according to the criteria of the according to the could criteria that have been of the no, a, no, that's not Christ. Melchizedek is not Christ. All right, who showed up in the den, the lion's den, with Daniel? I can give you the sources now. It wasn't Christ. It was an angel, right? Okay. Right, Close the mouth He's of the line. An now, who showed up in the fire with uh, with those three brothers that were thrown in the fire? I can't angel. remember their names. It was an angel. That wasn't Christ. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, when David said that he, when David praised God under the Holy Spirit, which wasn't really mentioned in the, the Old Testament, I can't recall it being mentioned. Oh, but mentioned no, it has been mentioned. It was we mentioned the Spirit of God, not the Holy Spirit, was it? Yeah, the Holy Spirit but, has been mentioned as well. But was that not Christ? Well, Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit is not Christ. No, no. But, if you say if you say to me if you say to me that the Holy Spirit is Christ, you've you've, you've broken the Trinity. Because the Trinity is very clear that the Holy Spirit is not the Son, the Son is not the Father. They are distinct in person. The three personalities, right? But they're right. one. So they are distinct. No, but they are distinct in person. So that means you cannot say that the Holy Spirit is Jesus. You cannot say that. It's, it's heretical. Okay, then why is it that the Holy Spirit did not come until Jesus left and was risen Actually, the Holy and Spirit received was already the there. The Holy Spirit was already there. Which kind but of it doesn't, show question. me in the Bible where that is. I mean, show me where it okay. says the, the, the acknowledgement the of the Holy Spirit being there. At the, because the at Holy the Spirit, is shown, according to the New Testament, it did not show up until the day of Pentecost. Everyone no. was gathered in... No, because it's, 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 the Bible is not just the New Testament. 
Holy Spirit showed up in the Old Testament. Holy Spirit showed up at the baptism of Jesus, right? The spirit of dove, the, the dove, right? The spirit that came on him like a dove. That was the Holy Spirit. Right? Holy Spirit was present. When he said into the, uh, to the disciples, he said, now I have given you the Holy Spirit. Okay? I have breathed into you the Holy Spirit. He says this in John chapter 17. Okay? Uh, to the disciples. So he gives them the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's there all along. But then he says to them, the Holy Spirit can't come until I depart. Going on here. Politics. What is your YouTube channel? Cause I got a golf game. I gotta go. Uh, uh, okay. Meet your friend <laughs> my at, uh, my uh, channel what, is what? Yemenite. Yemenite Front. So Y E M A N I T E. No, no. Y E M E N I T E Front. So. And if you check out my first uh, series, right, which is um, uh, called What Trinity, right, it is specifically to the Trinity in the Old Testament, right, and the claims of, uh, uh, you know, the, the evidence is that it doesn't actually exist in the Old Testament. So that's for the Trinity, okay, and then I have a couple of debates with Christians, yeah, on the God of Abraham, was the, is, is the God of Abraham the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him? And the other debate that I have, which was about the logic of Christianity and Islam, which religion is more logical, Islam or Christianity. So I've got, okay. Okay, you know, I just have one more question to ask you, and I'm, I'm sorry sure. for cutting you off, but I, I'm no kind of pressed for time. One more question That's to fine. ask you. When we die, what happens if we die leaving and with the Holy Spirit? What happens next? Is it paradise and eternity with God? Or how does that work? Because the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise If you die as a Christian? If you die as a Christian, you mean? Is that what yes. you're yes. From an Islamic perspective, if you die as a Christian, after knowing the message of Islam and it making sense to you and you purposefully rejecting it, then uh, you'd be in hellfire. But if so you die as a Christian... that's what we believe as Christians. Mm. If you die but as if you, a Christian exactly. and you fall so away we, from those beliefs right. and believe something else, you will well, we have that caveat. Well, we have that caveat. We, <laughs> okay. you, you'd have to have knowledge. You, you'd have to have knowledge of um, fully, right? and reject it purposefully. Right? So if you, so for example, if you lived your entire life as a Christian, and no one told you anything about Islam, and you died, you're not, you're not going to go to, you're not going to go to hell. Right? Because you've never I mean, what been given that Where do you go? There you go. Okay. So you get tested. Okay, you get know. tested by God on the day of judgment. Yeah. So God, what, 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 you that. what do you mean you get tested? I don't, I'm not sure if I understand. No so this life, this life is a test. From the Islamic perspective, this life is a test. Will we worship God or not? After He has revealed things for us, after He has given us our guidance, are we going to worship? And then we make our choice. Right? Yes or no. We either choose to obey or disobey. So he gives us the test and gives us the answers for the test. All of them, right? And then we choose. Do we accept the answers and follow it? Or do we ignore the answers and fail the test? Right? So if we uh, choose to disobey him knowingly, we end up in hellfire. Right? But if we, and if we have no knowledge, so if we, if we don't have any knowledge of the test and we don't have any knowledge of the answer, then it will be unjust for God to punish us for things that we don't know. But likewise, if you died and you didn't know anything about Islam, and Islam didn't make sense to you, or someone, even if you, someone conveyed the message of Islam to you, and they conveyed it all wrong, and you rejected it based on that, you wouldn't be held accountable, because God is going to say, well, you haven't been told about Islam properly. You didn't know what Islam actually is. Or you rejected something you didn't know. I'm not going to punish you for that. Then he so will test you, you on the Day of Judgment. Hmm? On the Day of Judgment, he tests you. On the day of judgment, he'll That's test you in order to be judged. That's the first time I've ever heard anything yeah. like that before in yeah, my so, entire life. So why, he tests you on the, why he tests you on the day of judgment is because he tested us in this world. So out of his justice, he tested us, he'll test you. Just fair. Okay, I, I'm sorry, i got to take off because uh, this guy's waiting no on me in virtual golf. But listen, I am going to check out your YouTube. and I mean, it's my first time coming in here, and I really appreciate everything I... Hope everybody here have oh, a wonderful uh, year. Uh, when when are you uh, going to have another session like this? Do you have these uh, quite often? Tomorrow. So it's every Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. officially. Um, uh, GMT time. Or British time.
Okay. So no, tomorrow, tomorrow we'll be back here again. 7.30 p.m. GMT. 7.30 so GMT. You Eastern Sun? Are you Eastern or Pacific? I'm Eastern, indeed. I'm Eastern. Yes. So you're five hours behind, which means 7.30 for us yeah. is 2.30 p.m. for you. Yeah. Right. Or right. for you, okay. 2.30 yeah, p.m. Gotcha. in the afternoon. Let me ask you one thing. What do you think about the financial situation on this planet right now? The cryptocurrency, the uh, the way that the, the <laughs> currency is... <laughs> the financial don't laugh at, please don't laugh at crypto, okay? Because fin- I'm no, really no, the financial... Yeah. I'm financial, into crypto, bro. The, the, huh? the, the, the economy, the economy of the world is crypto. Yeah. yeah. The economy of the world is improving. Uh, really? And soon, and soon, yeah, yeah, it's improving. You think it's improving? Um, 100%. I mean, they're printing the money like we... it's going out of style, and the value of the dollar here in this country is going, like, to the dumps. It's about to collapse, yes. It's about to collapse, yeah. 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 You don't think so? The, no, the, 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 there's two things, right? First, the economy, we're talking about the value of Dollar is one is one thing. The economy is another. Even if the value of the dollar decreases, the economy isn't based upon the value of the dollar, right? It's, in place, it's based on yeah. what you do with it. So based on what you do with it. So you could say the the economy of uh, Qatar and Abu Dhabi uh, is booming, right? but it's not based on the dollar, right? Um, it's based on their own. It's, not, it's based on the dirham. So it's not based on the value of, a, of any particular currency. So if you talk about the economy of the world, it's, it's booming, right? There's much more employment, there's much more business, there's much more uh, import and export, there's a lot of that stuff, right? But yes, we do see poverty because we have the rich hogging all the money. But there is money, the economy is there, it is booming, it is improving, right? There are certain yeah, there's no one that may... you got all these jobs available, but there's no one to work these jobs because the... Over here in this this country, they're paying people to stay home and not work. So how is the economy improving? Yeah, you can. Uh, we got 11.5 million jobs available, and that's 1.5 job per every unemployable individual. So how? I mean, that, right, that right there is going to cause problems here in the, in the country. And the dollar, if they keep printing well, money, it depends on it depends on how home. depends on how people it depends on how people go about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's a I lot. Mean, there's there's a, a lot. Of, but remember, we we're under the uh, you were talking about Boris Johnson earlier. We're under you know the Joker Biden Biden. You know, yeah, Joker yeah, Biden. He doesn't have an, uh, doesn't have an idea yeah, let's or go clue with, what's let, going on with the economy. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I got one more question for you here, and then I really got to take off because this guy's really waiting. Right, we got to be able to play some golf. No one more question for you. Here. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, if you if you die and you are not aware of the Quran, you're not aware of Christianity, and God judges on you on the day of the redemption or the day of judgment, whatever, and you don't pass the test, you go to hellfire. Yes. Hey, you and I have to talk about that, okay? Because it just doesn't seem like the type of God that I serve. You know, we believe the God. Well, what do you call it? We'll we'll, we'll talk more about talk more about the justice and the mercy of I just I don't know. I don't understand it's about the test thing because it's the first time I've ever heard about being tested. You know, on the day of judgment. We don't know. I mean, test that it's gonna be, but we know that God is just. So whatever the test it is, that He you know He is just. He's gonna test you. So. No one, no one. And, so, and what do you think about babies when they die, you know, from abortion? Oh, no, they go, to, they go to paradise. They go to paradise, inshallah. Straight to paradise. Anyone, who, anyone, an abortion, anyone who dies. Yeah, that anyone baby goes to Anyone who aborts a child, what happens to the person who aborts a child? Oh, they, 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 they serve their birth. punishment. And they serve their punishment. So even if it's, for example, if it's a Muslim woman who aborts her child, right. she will she will get punished for it. Even if she is Muslim, because she's created, she's committed sin, she's committed murder. Okay. okay. It's complex. But she will be punished. So just because she's I mean, a Muslim. It is complex, but it's, it's, I can agree with that because, I mean, we're, we're not creators of It does get, it does, it, look, it, it's actually quite simple, um, but it requires a lot of, like, uh, analogies and stuff for you to, like, sort of grasp it because there's, it's, uh, the justice system in Islam and the concept of, the hereafter is very intricate. It's very detailed in Islam. Okay. Right. So there's a lot for us to discuss. So hopefully, when we see you again, hopefully tomorrow, if not next week. Um, yeah, if not no, tomorrow, definitely uh, next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, hey guys, okay. I really enjoyed this, man. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you. We appreciate you. All right. All right. Okay. Um,
so. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, guys, have a good one. All right, I'm kind of new to VR, but uh, I'm getting around. Thank you. Oh, right. Don't worry. Thank you. All right, all right, thank you. Yeah. جزاك الله خير برادر يمني بارك الله الله يحفظك يور افورس ان شاء الله ما شاء الله برادر يمني باي ذا واي اف يو هاف ا بانر كان يو سند تو مي بليز